Joshua now has perfect information. Yes. Assemble. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Sindanes, thank you, thank you so much for your early tier one. Appreciate that a lot. Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much. Happy Monday, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. Whatever. You guys really like meeting, huh? I I never expected you guys to just go off so hard on meeting when we added that. But hey, I'm done. I am done. Oh my god, what a start to the week. Raw, I'm a dinosaur. Thank you for the five gift subs. Yo, thank you. Hello from France. Hello from Germany. How are you doing? Thank you so much, Raw, I'm a dinosaur. Appreciate that. Well, well, well. How's everyone doing? We got some stuff to do this week because... God damn, that YCS is coming closer quick, dude. I... I... Yeah, this is... Uh... This is, it's kind of urgent. Although, like, I mean, there is not that urgent because, uh, it's kind of just like probably gonna be tier list, uh, tier element. I don't know. Like, there's just not that much of a yeah. I don't know. You won't get the YGL today. Okay, well then we will not try. What was it? How's your preparation, Tulia? I mean, I'm in this weird spot. I'm in this weird spot where I, um, Joshua now has hold on, <laughs> going to my first YCS in London in April, absolutely breaking it, but glad Yu-Gi-Oh has given me a social space I'm comfortable with. Hey, oh, that's nice. Enjoy your first YCS. I'll also be there. See you there. Uh, anyways, what was I saying? Um, also, thank you for the three months of course, Monarch. Uh, my my preparation for YCS Lyon is the following situation. I'm like, mm, let's say 80% sure. 80% sure that I'm just going to play tier elements. Uh, will it be your first YCS 2? Absolutely, yes. Uh, the, yeah, I, I do think it's just, I do think it just has to be like uh, a tier element. So, my current situation is chances sank from 99 to 80%. We cooking? I don't know. I don't remember saying 99. Well, maybe. I don't know. I don't know exactly what the chances are, okay? Don't, don't pinpoint me on the freaking, on the, on the, on the, the, the chances. <laughs> that's not what I, that's not the point. That's not the point. The point is, well, technically you're right, Skrelb. Yeah, technically the chance is 50% because either I bring it or I don't. So like 50-50, you know, the classic statistic. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, I personally don't feel like, I personally don't feel like that there's a whole lot to be done when bringing Tierlemon to the format. Of course, you uh, you have to like, you have to figure out the ratios of the new cards. You have to figure out how many, like, of each of the new cards you want to fit into the deck. Like, do you want to play a full Kashtera package? Do you want to play a small Kashtera package? I've also seen lists that don't even run any of the Kashteras except for Tier Limit Kashtera, which is also fine. Um, but for the most part, for the most part, I don't feel like I don't feel like there's a whole lot that I need to to test and learn, right about the the YCS Leon format. I do think I do think it's just basically the format from YCS Dortmund but a little bit worse overall is my first impression uh after having play, dabbled a bit on stream and also a little bit off stream. I think it just it just feels a little bit like Kashtira entering the meta game doesn't really make it much better. And the tier limit mirror match also doesn't get much better. Or like, it gets a little bit worse because of, I think, triple tactics thrust. Uh, that card just makes Bestial's 
a little bit worse and a little bit makes the format a little bit more sacky. Uh, so I'm not like, I'm not like too happy about it. But overall, I st I still think it's a it's a fine format. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm not too worried about bringing, um, Tierlemon to YCS Lyon. Like if that if that ends up happening, if that's the timeline, it's like I'm okay, right? So what I've decided for myself is something that I've also done for basically almost the same for that I did for YCS Dortmund is I'm going to be like, I'm going to be testing this week. I'm going to spend this week testing other decks and see if there's anything that I like, any sleeper pick. I don't know what that even is yet. I don't know if there's anything that I think is like particularly strong, but you know, there's a few things I want to try, and if nothing works out, I'm happy to go back to tier element. Or, like, you know, happy, right? Um, I don't know exactly what ha is the most promising from the decks yet. I We've tried some Labyrinth last week, which felt like a good deck, but I'm not sure if quite good enough. Um, but I don't know. Then, like, Sprite is kind of in the same vein. Uh, I personally, just in case you were wondering, I am personally not considering... Um, I'm personally not considering Kash Tira or Floan de Ries for YCS Lyon because I simply don't like the style of deck. I think they are too vulnerable to um, just like power spells being like and, and not drawing shifter and whatnot and just bricking. I don't like those decks. Even though Kash Tira I don't think is as bricky as Flunder, but still, um, I don't like that style of deck. Um, yeah, I, I think it's too dependent on which outs your opponent draws and whatnot. I don't like it. Um, so, yeah, th th that's basically where I'm at for uh, for YCS Leon preparation. Not in, the, not in the worst spot, honestly. I'm not feeling too bad about it. I'm really not feeling too bad about it. I, I'm just, like, also not super excited for it because there's not... I don't feel like there's much new stuff going on, which would normally be the case with a new set dropping right before the event. You'd expect, like, uh, deck building to be a very important, like, factor. Uh, which is I'm a little bit disappointed by, but we'll see. I mean, yeah, I I think um, I think it's whatever. It's okay. Anyways, I've gotten ahead of myself. I want to talk about more of that um, in today's stream. Uh, but let me let's let's now that I've already talked for a couple of minutes. Surely we have a lot of people in chat already, and we can crush the the card guesser world record easy clap, right? Easy, easy, surely. So let's get this over with. Uh, we are also going to look at the Mikanko Tirlement deck. I, we've talked about it before, like last week, I believe. We mentioned it on the stream, but um, it did win a regional. So I'm, I'm down to check that out as well. This looks awfully familiar. Yeah, this is like Return Zombie. Yeah. Uh, I have no clue. Do I skip? I've... Oh, wait, no, it's small, big wave, small wave. Oh, god damn it. Uh, is this a metal foe? Oh, no, it's a quirky... Ah, uh, I'm skipping this one. Oh, okay, this is a bad start. It was core overclock. This is karma cut, I believe. Yeah. Okay, what's the smiling cat? I feel like I've seen this, but I can't name it. Transfamiliar? Hasn't... What? Familiar? Oh, trans-familiar. Collude! Right? Yeah. Oh, uh, this is a Butter Spy or whatever. Like, is this Butter Spy or Papillon? Purple Butterfly? No. Not Butter Spy? Oh my god. Why is there so many different Butterfly cards? Who asked? It is a Butter Spy! Oh god. Uh, 
ancient warrior. Right? Lubu, Xiangde. How do you know any of these names? <laughs> How many? Oh god. I'm skipping. I this is the this round is already cursed. Here's some Zhang Yuan. Alright. Uh is this yellow, Dustin? Or is this is not white, right? Yeah. I think this is Neo, the Magic Swordsman. What is this? Oh. <laughs> Three. Uh, Nitro Warrior, is it not? Edison, yep. But I'm bad today, I'm sorry. I'm bad today. It's not great. It's not looking great. Turning of the world. Yep. Come on. Is this an evil swarm? No. Dark storm dragon? Dark storm? That does not exist. Oh, wait, it does. Mm. Uh, okay, this is Despia Dogma Dogmatica something, but what is it? Surely you know this. Calamity? Dogmatic Calamity? Nope. Ah, oh, there's too many of these. But never, never mind, there's not enough. They should make more. I take that back. They should make more. Uh, this is Butler-esque. Is this Theban Nightmare? No. Aw, oh, Portray Secret. Which one is Nightmare of Theban? And what the hell is this? Oh! Oh! I've never looked at it close up. I always die too quickly. I always die too quickly. I've never looked at it that way. <laughs> this is not my body as a shield, no. But Revival of Dokura Rider. My god. The day is truly cursed. This is chain something. It's not chain uh the burning card. Is this chain healing? No. Chain detonation? Yeah. Now, ugh, I'm so bad today. To be fair though, who the hell knows Super Soldier Rebirth? Okay, HZKO does. Yeah, fair enough. Question is this question? No, it's not question. It's not question. Is it question? It is question. That's, uh, why did I think it wasn't question? Uh, I think this is cyber larva.
Wait, this is the Spellbook Tower. No, this is Citadel of Endymion, right? Yeah. Uh, Kexy thank you for the three months. Appreciate you. Welcome back. Uh, Fright for Lion? Leo? Yeah. Uh, Herald of Purple. The bad one. I know this one. Archfiend Scars or something? Battle Scarred? Is that what I'm thinking of? No. Archfiend. Oh, I'm gonna be so mad that I don't know this one. That I'm not getting this. Because there's so many Archfiend cards. But I've seen this a thousand percent. Battle Scarred, that's what it was. I knew it was something with Scars. Ah. Joshua now has perfect information. Yesterday, Turbo Rank 8 OTK won original in Italy. 7-0. to zero. I was the head judge and I have the list. Unbelievable. <laughs> that is crazy, Brago. Thank you for the uh, four months. Also, Eric Sendamorfa, thank you for the gift sub. Appreciate you guys on this Monday morning supporting the stream. Thank you so much. Wait, why is this not an insect level something? Oh, it's the fire thing. What is it called? Uh, fireworm? Is it just fireworm? No, it's not. Warm worm. King Bear. Oh, uh, is this Boxia? It's not Boxia. Wait, who is it then? It's some. It's Yang Zing. Yang Zing unleashed. But is Boxia in the image, right? I'm not tripping. That's Boxia. Uh, this is a Kwaki Meru, I think, but I can't name it. The bear, I don't know the bear. At Joshua Schmidt Tigo, I went to a regional this weekend and a guy went 7-0 to zero with Branded Bysteel, then went to Glasgow, three hours drive, and went 6-0-1 and came first. This is a home. hero. Have the Solid list if soldier. you're interested later, smile. Sorry, Alzaris, I'm reading it in five minutes after we are done with the thingy, but thank you for the bits. I will, I'll read it, I'll read it, I promise. I already saw it the first time. <laughs> Uh, this is from the Atlantean structure deck, I think, but a bad one, like Poseidon or something. Yeah. But we have 400 points, chat. It's embarrassing. It's mostly my fault. <laughs> it just feels better if I'm blaming us. Uh, this is like Dread Scythe something. Harvester? Yeah. Uh, this is Drastic Drop-Off. Yep. Is this a sub -tier? Or not? C dra that does not exist. Druk. Oh, this one. Okay. See, I told you it was a, a, a sub tier. This one I have seen. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Anti-fusion device? True. Bro, what the hell is this? Is this Spring Gans? Oh no, it's Therion Cross. 
That counts as spring ends. I was right. I, I count that. Uh, oh my god. Peri... Perialis? Or something? It's a, it's a, it's a plant synchro. Queen of Thorns? Is that the one? That is the one. Uh... Rizalis Dolphin? What is this one? Is that Hero Spirit? Are you sure? It's not Hero Lives, no. <laughs> hey, it's Mushroom Man. Uh, it's something of the normal. Revenge? Yeah. Morgan. Oh, I know this one. Oh, you can play this in Edison. It's like Sea Archer or something. No, it's not Sea Archiver. Oh, Mermaid Archer. That's the one. It's like a Deep Sea Diva target. Ghost Trick or something. Okay, it is a ghost trick. Uh, Zen Mighty. Uh, the Phantom Knight, but oh my, the, the 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 broken one. But which one is that? Uh, Torn Skills. Yep. Uh, I have no idea. Spin turn. This is an Ateria card, like Moss. This one, yeah. <laughs> what is this one? <laughs> oh my, look at his eye. That's not LV. Oh my god. Uh, okay, we have eight seconds. If we get this one, we get 700. Which one is this? Three. Violet. Oh, no, I was about to click. Oh, God, it was Violet, bitch. Oh, uh, nah. Okay, well, 694 it is. 694 it is. That did not feel like a good round. I'm still like, I'm in weekend mode. It's fine. For weekend mode, this is all right. All right. Well, well, well. First one is memes. We can break this. Yeah, we'll break it tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll surely do better than this. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. Let's get into some content. Let's talk about like Photon Hypernova and YCS Leon approaching. Um, let us get into that stuff. So... We did have the Challenger Cup on Friday, which, by the way, thank you all for um, thank you all for watching and and participating. If you did, if you missed it, there's also the the VOD is up on uh, on my channel. For some of you that were here on Friday, you guys you guys already know that after the after the Challenger Cup was over, we I I went back online for like an extra bonus hour of of talking about these really quick all the card the new cards that were revealed from Photon Hypernova. Um, so I don't want to go into these in too much detail anymore, but just quickly wanted to, to, to like touch upon because like, I mean, there's surely there's a bunch of people that weren't here on Friday, uh, at like 8 PM or whatever it was when we did this. So I felt like it was good to go over this, um, just in like very briefly. Uh, there's only one card here that I want to talk about in a little bit more detail. And that's the first one here. Um, but yeah. What won your cup? Despia won the Challenger Cup. We do know the poll list now, including all the Starlights. I also have the Starlights pulled up. We can talk about the Starlights a little bit. 
I just wanted to quickly say about these cards. We're going to talk about Gravekeeper's Inscription a bit because I think out of these, I mean, I guess that summarizes it. Out of all these, I do think that for now, the only relevant release is Gravekeeper's Inscription. I think that's the only one that we need to really talk about here. But Minai Ruka is a nice little tool for some decks. It just doesn't really have a home for now. Uh, this card is not very good, in my opinion. Uh, this card is a good card that once again feels a little bit gimmicky and doesn't really have a, a concept around it yet. But like it's an it's an okay card. Uh, this card is terrible. This card is interesting, but I don't think it's very good for now. The gold pride archetype is, in my opinion, not awful so far the cards that have been revealed so far are not awful um they just need more and they also need an environment that is not ishizu tier like the the current decks are just too powerful for this but it's like it's not a bad archetype in its in its like yeah from from the get-go right um from the imports irrelevant irrelevant pretty much irrelevant like ir irrelevant irrelevant this card is not bad but it there's like you're not going to really see it that much i think um like it's 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 a good card but it's not going to be around i think green ninja apparently is is okay in the ninja deck but i don't think the ninja deck is going to be anywhere so it's it's kind of whatever but i cool i guess cool import i guess and this one is also irrelevant so that is my that is my condensed really quick summary of these if you want me if you want to see my my first reaction to these, you can check out the VOD from last Friday, because I did live react to these on stream when they when they came out, or like shortly after. So for a more in-detail reaction, you can check out that VOD later. But for now, I think for YCS Dortmund, I think you're okay if you literally only know this card. For now. Like everything else, everything else is is kind of whatever for now. Um Yeah, I'm pretty sure. But that card, that card, I do think is is worth discussing at least for a little bit for 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 the upcoming format. It's it feels like in a weird universe. In a weird universe, did I say YCS Dortmund? I meant YCS Lyon. For in a weird universe, it feels like. Konami is like saying, hey, we're not giving you a ban list for now, but hear me out, but we're going to give you this. Which, I don't know, man. You coming, Leon? Uh, I will be at YCS Leon. Yeah, thank you for the eight months already. Eight months. Damn. Thank you for the continued support. Appreciate that. The... So okay, this, at the start of your main phase one, apply apply one of these one of the following effects until the end of your opponent's turn. Neither player can activate card effects in the graveyard. Neither player can banish cards from the grave. Neither player can special monsters from the graveyard. So the the purpose of this card pretty much is that it's solid against Ishizu tier, of course, because that's a deck we all know how powerful Dweller is against that deck. This card is basically Dweller. For both players, but also for two turns. Um, it can only be used at the start of your main phase. Which means that, of course, you can't like find it off of a prosperity or something like that. That's not possible. You have to open the card. Um, this card is essentially, how I would describe it, is like a little bit... Um, it's a worse dimension shifter. For some decks. That being said, I think that some decks might want to play more than just three Dimension Shifter. Like some decks are maybe okay with having a, a verse version of Dimension Shifter on top of already running Dimension Shifter. Uh, Zero Bell, thank you for the five months. The reason why I'm saying this is because this card is completely auto win going first. Right? If you go first, you can activate this card, you call the first effect, and what this does is. It locks your opponent out of using any of the hand traps, like Havnis or Tillemans Kashtira. They can summon them, but they can't do anything with the stuff that they mill, so it's pretty much useless. 
Uh, and then it also locks them out from their turn. Right? So you can you can just like go ahead and uh you can just go ahead and, and start playing with this card, which is pretty good. Um going second though, of course, it's much worse than Shifter. While not while not completely bad going second, because we all know that tier limits usually have like tier limits biggest strength. Tier limits biggest strength is not that it puts up uh, an immediately unoutable board on the spot, right? It's it's like uh, the strength of tier limit is that it's such a strong grind game and such a hard position to outmaneuver when they get to set up their full thing because they have so much follow up, they have so much like interaction on your turn. Like if if your if your opponent makes a tier limit board of like I don't know, uh, elf, rule Kalos, Saliak, and uh, I don't like let's say dweller let's just say blind they make a dweller and you have this card right you're you're still stopping a lot of things right because the elf brings back brings back a merly that mills three for example and that's like what they hit with that doesn't matter uh if they have additional halfness or tillaments cash tira in hand that doesn't matter so all they have essentially after you use the inscription is they have the rule Kalos negate, but what they sent doesn't do anything. And they have the, the tier limits Saliac negate, but what they send with that also doesn't trigger. So I think it's like okay into tier limit even going second. But the 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 problem that I have with it is that it's basically which deck do you want to put this in? And I can only think of like very, very few decks that can use this card because it does, because it is actually well designed in the sense that it's like a two sided effect, right? It's a two sided effect that um, means that some decks just can't really use this card super, super well, right? Um, of course, it's, it's, it's going to be playable in Fluanderies and Kashtira. Those decks can absolutely play the card, uh, 100%. I don't know if it's good enough to main deck. Like, I don't know if in general I would ever main deck this card in this current format. M maybe, but probably not. Because if you're, if you're playing a deck that already has, like, Shifter, and then you also throw in this card, you're essentially saying, I'm, I want to have six cards that are only good against tier limits, and they're completely useless. They are completely useless against Kashtira and Flunder, which I don't know if that's a cool thing, right? I don't know if that's good enough, uh, but you're going to have a good time against here. So if that's what you're worried about, then sure, I guess. Um, there is like one deck that I don't know if I don't think this makes it playable. I just want to I just want to get that out here is that the deck that probably like benefits the most from this card is probably... Like the deck that benefits the most from this card that is not Ishizu, nah, that isn't Flander or Kashtira, is probably Runic. Runic Sprite, probably most specifically. And the reason why that is, is because the card is very, very strong. I mean, it's going first, just really good against tier. But going second, it does a very cool thing where. It stops not only a lot of the, the, the tier limit cards, but it also stops the Ishizu shufflers. Um, but you can still interact with your own graveyard, right? You, you just can't activate card effects in the graveyard, but you can still use um, Runic Fountain to shuffle back, right? So you really don't care about this effect. You can still use Elf. You can still use whatever. All, what you can't do is trigger stuff in the graveyard. So for example... It stops Cap Shell. That's like the one card that Runic Sprite. I don't even know if Runic Sprite will still play Cap Shell, but like that's that that would be one card that this stops. And that's pretty much it. I don't think I don't think you want to be playing Runic Sprite just because of this card. Like if, because if you don't draw this card, you have the same problems as before. But it is. Um, I think that is one of the decks, one of the examples of a deck that that really benefits from this card. Um. As far as it goes, I think this is a solid side deck card. I'm pretty sure this is a solid side deck card. Like, uh, in, in some decks, you might want to side this. Um, the problem is that you just have to open it, right? You can't find it. Even in a deck like Runic Sprite, like, what if you draw into it with your fountain? It's completely useless. So, 
Overall, I think this card is strong. And of course, it is a floodgate type effect, right? Which deck can play this with Shifter? I mean, I think Kashtira and Flander can just go. If you want to go, if you want to go full anti, um, if you want to go full anti tier limit, Kashtira or Flander, you can just play three Inscription and three Shifter, and then you know go into town, and then hope you just don't have mirror matches. And it's probably okay. Can find it with Triple Tactics. I mean, you can search it with Triple Tactic Thrust, but you can't use it. Right? You can't use it that turn. So it's it's kind of weird. So I, I think this card has its uses, but I think overall that this card is actually like while it is a floodgate card, which I'm not a huge fan of, it is very balanced by a few things. Like the fact that it's two-sided. The fact that it's two-sided means that you you can't use it just in every single deck because a lot of decks just care about it as well, right? So you can't do it. You can um, you cannot draw into it because it says at the start of your main phase one. That's another drawback. So overall, it's like it, it's it's a good card, but I think it's a little bit overrated right now. Like I I don't think it's I don't think it's bad by any means, and I do think it will see play. I just think it's not as versatile and not as broken as people make it out to be. It's like a little bit of a, yeah, it's, it's just, you're applying the dwell, you're, you're just applying dweller, dweller to both players for a minus one, which is, it's, it's definitely more balanced than shifter. In my opinion, it's definitely more balanced than shifter. Um, but it is an okay card. I think. I, I think it's definitely an okay card. Like, it's it's decent. It's decent. Um, and the only reason why I say this is because I think it's also not too bad going second against tier um, to still lock them out from graveyard effects. I think that's okay, because um, it's, it's basically a little bit like Necro Valley or um, Dimensional Fissure going second, right? Sprite works better with this than Shifter. Uh, it it does, but like it's still worse going second than having a shifter. If even if you're playing sprite, because going second you're still gonna have you're still gonna make they're still gonna make their board, and then yeah you stop like an Ishizu shuffler or two, you stop a Havnis, you stop a rule Kalos from coming back or whatever, but you still have to deal with their stuff, which isn't the easiest thing in the world. But I do think it's a good card. I just don't know how often it'll actually see play. Drawing it as the sixth card is better than Shifter, is it not? Well, I mean, if you have a graveyard already, then yeah. If you have a graveyard already, then yes. This card is also better in grind games. That is that is a point that's, I guess, worth mentioning. It's like, if you draw into this card in the middle of the game when it's going back and forth, of course, it's much better than Shifter. Yeah. Song name? Uh, bu -bu -bu. The song name is Get It Right. But it's a good card. It's a, it's a good card. I I personally don't know if if I would use it. I think there's there's like potentially better cards, but the cool thing is that this cannot be like destroyed. Like I think one problem that cards like Necro Valley and and uh, Fissure have is like of course of course like Necro Valley um clashes with your other field spells. In, I think, the top two decks that are going to be using this card are Flunder and Kashtira, and both of those decks have their own field spells, so that's kind of weak about Necro Valley. Also, um, Necro Valley and Dimensional Fissure can just be popped by Ishizu Shuffler plus Planet. Like, if they have Planet face up, they're just going to chain the Shuffler to your activation, and then they're going to pop it. If you draw two of them, can you use two? No, you can't, because it says start of main phase one. If you've used the first one, you can't use another one, because start of main phase one has to be the first activation in main phase one, basically. Uh, you can't use two of this. You can't draw this with extravagance or whatever like that. You cannot play this with extravagance even. Like, it doesn't work. Price prediction? I Look, I'm, I'm really not that good. I, what is the pre-sale price? I can tell you if I think that's reasonable or not. Is there already a is this already up for pre-sale somewhere? It's not on 
card market. 30. Thirty, I don't know. I mean, thirty isn't outrageous. You seem a bit tired. I'm fine. Oh, everything is good. Oh, oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> Twenty-three, twenty-five. Yeah, it feels okay. I, 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 it doesn't feel too bad. Like it doesn't feel like you're being ripped off. But like it, it could definitely go lower than that. It's not that big of a deal. The card, like it, to me, it feels a little bit like spellbound. It feels a little bit of spellbound, like spellbound vibes, but it's better than spellbound. Like it, it feels better than spellbound. I don't think it's as bad as as of a card as spellbound, but I I don't know if I would spend thirty on it. Probably not. Spellbound, but it can technically be used. Yeah, I do think it will see some experimentation as long as Tillamant is as strong as it is. I do think some rogue decks. Mainly Kashtira and Flander that really don't care about this card. Like, the, the drawback here is, like, basically I irrelevant for those decks. Uh, I think they do want this type of effect, but I, I don't know. Like, I don't think it's going to be. Like, for a card that I believe to be mostly a side deck card in only some decks, I don't think it's going to be that expensive. You run this or the Crick spell that does the same thing. You mean Forbidden Graveyard? But Forbidden Graveyard is only one turn, and you have to discard. Like, Forbidden Graveyard, I think, is just worse than this card, unless you want to use your own. Like, isn't Silent Graveyard also two-sided? Or is that at least one-sided? Silent Graveyard. No, it's also two-sided. Silent Graveyard is also two-sided. I think this card is better than Silent Graveyard for the most part, except for the fact that you cannot find it with, like, Prosperity or something. Right? But the fact that you have to discard for, uh, for Silent Graveyard I think makes this card slightly better overall. I don't know. But I, overall, I still, I still think that the first reaction when this card was revealed was, like, far bigger than it should have been like a lot of people were like coming into my chat and be like screaming oh my god they released the new floodgate it's gonna be insane i don't think it's that good i really don't think it's that good it's it's all right it's all right shifters in the game com 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 complain about shifter i genuinely cry i mean as it as as someone i i personally am planning to bring tier limits to ycs leo so i'm not thrilled at this card being in the game, of course, for now. If I am playing tier, I would not like to have this card activated against me. Please refrain from doing so. But I overall still don't think this is the biggest issue. Like, it's, yeah, it's, it's all right. It's whatever, in my opinion. Yeah. Does your tier have the go? I, so far, I haven't, I mean, I haven't built it yet. I don't know yet, but I don't think it's going to be that special i personally don't feel like that i have not heard of any crazy developments in the tier limit metagame so far like i i feel like it's just gonna be try and find the most solid list that fares well into the mirror match but also can win against kashtira and flander game one and then like cover those decks with the side deck you not find the tier meta game a little bit boring for this reason. I I don't like the deck building portion of the format. I do I do say I, I can say that much. I do not enjoy the fact that I feel like there is not that much of an edge to be gained with deck building. I really like when formats have both, right? A a good like the playing portion needs to be good. Like it needs to be a skillful format, and I think deck building should also be important. I think deck building right now isn't as important, which is good for some people, but for someone who likes to build decks and who likes to be a little bit creative or likes to be able to make meta calls like myself, this is not the greatest thing in the world, but yeah. Did you see the Libromancer Mikanko Brave deck from Nets? Is there a list? Because I've seen some, in, I've, 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 sk I've skimmed through these uh, and there's not that much I wanted to look at. There's like one thing that I wanted to look at, which is the Tier Limit Mikanko deck. 
but yeah, I mean that's just my two cents on that's my two cents on Gravekeeper's inscription. I think it's an I think it's a good card. Uh, I think it shouldn't be underestimated, but at the same time, I don't think it deserves to be hyped or anything. How many Kashira decks do you expect at Lyon with how expensive it is? Um, it is something I was thinking about as like... Because I have noticed this trend. I don't know. You guys can say if you have another... Um, if, you, if you view it differently. But I personally have experienced over the last couple of days since they have um, announced the rarities or since the rarities have been revealed for the Kashira stuff. I, it's all it's almost been like a freaking movement in the community of like so many people that were preparing to play Kashtira have just dropped it like i feel like i don't know let me check real quick but i'm pretty sure yeah like <laughs> hold on i mean look at this Look at this price curve. Like, this thing has just dropped tremendously. Like, this thing was... I think, I think it was, like, 30 bucks. I think this was, like, 30, 30 bucks or whatever. Maybe 25. I don't... Like, 25. Yeah, 25-ish. Before the, ra the rarity reveals. And it feels like... It feels like... And now it's 15 or 16. Uh, because it just feels like people have been dropping the deck. People have been dropping the deck. They just don't really want to play it anymore because they have they would have to spend so much more. They'd have to spend so much more money just to get like the same deck as Fluanderies. Right? It's like the same deck as Fluanderies, just like a little bit shinier. But not worth like whatever thousand of bucks that you have to spend for it. So I personally am. Of course, I'm considering it in my deck building. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be testing against Kashira a decent amount, but I do think that if this deck was if this deck was lower rarity, it would be much more popular than it will be now. I do think that this will actually hurt its play rate at at the YCSs. Some people are still gonna show up with it. Some people are still gonna show up with it, but I think um. I think this is a real, this is a big deal for people that were trying to build this deck, especially considering the fact, like, combine the fact that there's, this deck has, like, insane rarities in Photon Hypernova, combine that with the fact that the, the set comes out two days before, right? So, like, how are you going to get, like, how much are you willing to spend when, especially, I mean, look at Ishizu tier right now. Ishizu tier costs how much? How much is an Ishizu tier deck right now? 200? Even if you need new, like, even if you need a couple new ultra rares from, from, uh, from Photon Hypernova, even if, even if you have to pick up, like, one of the field spell, it's, like, it's so cheap compared to this. And so, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe you don't want to play Ishizu tier because you think it's boring, or you 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 don't feel like you're good enough at the mirror match or whatever. You're not confident in it because it is a complicated deck. Fair enough. Then don't play Ishizu tier element. But then why would you pick Kashtira instead? Like Kashtira isn't that good. You can just play Flunder for what, like three Prosperities and three Advent, and that's it. The rest is like nothing. So. I don't know, man. Like, this is... I, I don't expect as much Kashtira because I cannot see someone picking Kashtira from the competitive perspective. From the competitive perspective, I don't think you should be playing pure Kashtira. But even from the, like, rogue anti-meta perspective, I also don't think you should be playing Kashtira because, I mean... Bro, you can just play Flunder and that's just the same deck, but, like, cheaper? And even the tech cards that people are using... You don't even lose two in Flunder, like uh, Kurikara or Nibiru are like in a lot of decks, and you don't care about those. So I don't know. I really don't know, man. Like you, you. There's like a 
there's a better competitive deck for the tryhards and there's a better anti deck or a cheaper anti deck for the uh, for the uh, for the rogue uh, andes so i don't know i don't really feel like there's much reason to play kashtira other than you want to there might be some people who've already invested in fenrir and unicorn and whatever and they might feel like they are now like too invested to stop but i don't know man i i i i do think that for ycs Lyon, Kashira is going to be a little bit less of my concern. I will definitely, what I will say is, um, cards like Nibiru or Kurikara, I currently don't plan on using because they are only good against Kashira, right? I mean, you could argue that you could side them against other matchups too, like Nibiru is good against a lot of Rogue, but I'm personally, I'm personally more leaning towards using cards that cover Flunder and Kashtira. Like a card like Book of Eclipse, maybe, that I can that I can also use against Flunder is is higher on my like, you know, on my priority list than uh than uh, Kurikara, for example, right now. Which makes me mad a little bit because I was really hoping to be able to play Kurikara. I think that card is very cool. But I just think the fact that I I would honestly think like like what? How many rounds of Swiss? Eleven rounds of Swiss, uh, or was it? Is it twelve rounds now with over two thousand players? I forgot. How many rounds of Swiss did we play in uh, Dortmund and Utrecht? It's twelve, right? Twelve rounds of Swiss. Twelve rounds of Swiss. I don't think I'm gonna be facing more than one or two Kashtiras. Personally, is my prediction. I think it's like one to two Kashtira, probably two Flunder, maybe a Sprite, and then probably just Tear, and everything else is like unpredictable, like random random rogue decks you can't really predict. But yeah, I don't think there's going to be that many Kashtiras. I really don't think so. What about Labyrinth? Uh, I mean, you could see some people show up with Labyrinth. I, it's like the problem with Labyrinth once again. I think it's a. I think it's a solid deck. Um, I personally like Labyrinth. I think it's a cool archetype, but it's it's got a few problems. Like it's not the best deck, and even for rogue decks, it's like relatively expensive. I want to say. I haven't followed the prices on the Labyrinth stuff, but I can only imagine like that Welcome Labyrinth and whatnot is already relatively expensive. So I don't expect to see many Labyrinth at YCS Lyon. Because if you, like I said, if you have that much money to spend, if you have that much money to spend, then uh, just... Play another rogue deck, probably. I don't know. It's like not bad. Some people really like that style of deck. Runic? Nah, Runic is not like feasible until Ishizu is gone. But we don't have to talk about every single deck. Like, luckily for all of you guys, luckily for all of you guys asking me about one specific deck, I've made a I've made a tier list. I've made a tier list and I've included all of those decks you are just typing into the chat box with a question mark. So just go exclamation mark YouTube and uh, you can check out the tier list. I, I made one. I made one with all those decks. Not Scareclaw. Yeah, okay. Don't play Scareclaw. <laughs> There's your answer. Just don't play Scareclaw, okay? Do me that favor. You haven't mentioned Witchcrafters yet. It's not expected, but it will win. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting take. <laughs> no seriously go check out the tier list go check out the tier list and as always like under the comment section in the comment section of the tier list um people will always ask me for decks that i missed and i'll try to answer as many if i have time i'm, I'm answering as many comments as i can so yeah One other thing that I wanted to quickly glance at together, just to see what you guys think, is the Starlight Rares, because there was a big surprise for me personally. I don't know about you guys, but Triple Tactics Thrust 
spoiler alert is not a starlight. Which I thought was wild. I expected that card to be a starlight. I'm so surprised there's not one from the regional mat. I mean, uh, as soon as you said it has to be one of those, I knew it was not going to be one of those. So that was not surprising. But anyways, uh, Pack Pack is in absolute shambles because he can't play. He can't starlight thrust people. Uh, but I mean, this thing, this thing is beautiful. This thing is nice, in my opinion. So any, but hey, it's a it's a hard time. It's a tough time for all the branded players. It's a tough time for branded players because you need, like, you need this thing and you also need the Mirror Jade that was already announced. How much is Thrust right now? I don't know. How much is Thrust? Is it for pre-sale already? No, it's not up yet. Eighty to ninety? I don't think it's gonna be that. Fifty-five dollars? That sounds more reasonable. Nah, that sounds more reasonable. Cause I remember talents. I remember talents was also not that expensive in the beginning. Like, how much was talents? Like fifty. I don't think it's one of those cards. I don't think it's one of those cards where uh, it's gonna reach like part of part of prosperity levels. I don't think it's that, I don't think it's that level, especially considering the rest of the secret rares. Like the rest of the secret rares are really, really strong, which usually means that like individual secret rares won't go as high. Like there's like the, the secret rares in this set overall are relatively strong. <laughs> you must understand that every regional match since ROTD has had a Starlight Rare on it. It is absolutely important that you understand that all right i understand anyways uh i don't think thrust is like is in the long term going to be as expensive maybe for leon right maybe for ycs leon because it comes out so shorthanded beforehand maybe it's going to be overpriced but in the long run i don't think it's going to be that bad personally like, I could definitely see the vendors juicing people for 90 at YCS Lyon, which, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, but it could happen. But in the long term, I don't, I don't see it being that much. Bestial Baldrake Common means Magnemute limited on the ban list for you? No, I don't think it has anything to do with that. I do think Magnemute will be limited, but I don't think that's because Baldrake is a common. Uh, anyways, Arise Hard. Oops. Which personally, I don't really care about this one. I feel like they didn't need to make this uh, a secret and an and a starlight. It looks good. I think it looks all right, but I don't think this needed a freaking secret and starlight. Like it's not like freaking, it's not like Kashtira players are gonna have any money left. After the set releases, let's be real. Who, like, nah, <laughs> hey, <laughs> I can't. If you're trying to play Kash Tira, like, you're not gonna have money for the, the Arise Heart in Starlight, it's not possible. You can't, you can't get it, bro. You, you can't have it. Friggin', like, what do they think? Like, what, what are they thinking with this one? Like, everyone's gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna get myself three Kash Tira Papias, I'm gonna get myself. Three uh, of the planet. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to get myself three Fenrir, three Unicorn, three Ultra Rare Arise Hearts. And then I'm going to have like how much left over? Like 500 bucks for two Arise Hearts? Nah. I don't know, man. This was a weird choice. That deck's expensive enough. Like this just should have been, this should have been thrust, dude. I don't need a house anymore. I, I, technically, I didn't. I wasn't planning on eating anyways in the month of February. I was not planning to eat anyways in the month of February. Like I'm not eating at all. 
Bro, what the hell is this image? How did you record this image? Now, if I didn't know this card, I had no I would have no chance of figuring this one out. There's no shot. This is the best image. <laughs> Friggin' filmed with a with their Nokia from 2001 or something. Uh anyways, this is a Tribrigate Link monster. <laughs> This is the Tribrigate Link monster, which uh, I think is so far out of these, probably the worst one. But I still think it's a good card. I still, I, I think it's a good card, but as a Starlight, it's still probably going to be like a, a stinker, right? That you don't want to open, I feel like, because it's only good for Punishment and Slayer, pretty much. For the most part. The art slaps. It is a good looking card. It is a good looking card. It is even a card that has use. But I don't think this is going to be uh, as expensive. Because, yeah, I don't know. Me paying 150 euros to send Garura with punishment. Giga chat. Yeah, true. Because it is like, what is the original rarity on this one? A super rare, right? Which I think is kind of whack. Like, this card does not look like a super rare to me. That's kind of underrepresenting. Like, this is a Tri Brigade Link 5. Like, hello? Why is this super rare? They should have made this at least ultra. But, I don't know. And then, I think this one takes the cake for now as the worst one. I think this takes the cake for now as the <laughs> worst Starlet one. I'm pretty sure. Fuck. Yo, Diasaku, thank you for the five months. Appreciate you so much. Welcome back. But it has the best photo quality. Finally, yeah. Booba You're literally going to booba at everything, aren't you? Like, there's no shot anyone sees this picture and actually thinks booba. No shot. Nah, 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 nah. I don't, like, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. <laughs> Anyways, um, this is like one of those cards. This is like one of those cards where you can like, you could gamble on this, which I don't know if I'd recommend because I think after Photon Hypernova, no one is going to play Gold Pride. So this thing, I don't think is going to be very expensive. So... If you wanted to gamble that Gold Pride becomes good, you should probably pick them up now. Because if they actually do get good, I'm pretty sure you can't freaking, uh, you don't want to pay for these anymore. Right? But then, if the next set comes out and the support is ass, because we only get one more wave of support. Because you only can you only get one more wave of support. If that wave is ass, then this card is gonna be worthless. Please give us a decisive answer so we can do the opposite. <laughs> Look, I can just tell you what I'm gonna do. <laughs> but I'm not telling you you should do the opposite. But what I'm gonna do is I'm not going to get this card because I don't care that much about Starlight Rares. I'm not going to gamble on Gold Pride becoming a good deck. Like, I don't care. I will not going to buy them. But that does not mean... Oh, God, no. That does not mean... Uh, stop. Hey, please. Please. <laughs> please, Chad, do not. Do not put your life savings into, into Gold Pride Captain... What's it even called? Captain Perry? Do not. <laughs> Carry, not Perry. <laughs> I already did. All right. Fair enough. Well, good luck then. So what I, what do you guys think overall about Photon Hypernova? I'm going to make a poll because I'm genuinely interested. Hold on. Let me make that poll.
Give me your answers now. Is it good, mid, or bad, chat? Now, basically, if you're clicking bad, if you're clicking bad, I already know you're a Kash Tira player. That is literally, I think, I think we can agree on the fact that that's the only way you dislike this set is if you're trying to play Kash Tira. And I understand you. Hey, I'm not blaming you. If you were planning, if you were planning to play Kash Tira, there's like nothing like this set is awful for you. <laughs> this was bad news. This was bad news if you were playing to if you were planning to play Kashtira. From my perspective, as someone who doesn't want to play Kashtira, I think we're getting away pretty easy with this set. Like honestly, everyone that's not playing Kashtira, I think can be happy with this set. Like you can maybe it's mid for you because it's just not as exciting. Maybe you think it's good. But I feel like for everyone that doesn't want to play Kashtira, it's just a solid set. Like, I, 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 I'm pretty happy with it. The Gishki cards are super cheap. Um, pretty much every single card that I want to get is either relatively cheap or... Uh, like, even if it's a secret rare that I want, even if it's a secret rare that I want, it's, like, not that expensive. Like, where is the full list? Like... I, I, look, there's not that much I'm looking to pick up. Of course, thrusting, triple tactics thrusting is like something that I, I'm going to need at some point, probably. But that's to be expected, right? That there's like a, that there's like a new secret rare that you need to, need to pick a playset up, right? That's like, okay. But everything else besides thrusting, if it isn't Kash Tira, it's probably going to be cheap. So I'm happy. Honestly, personally, I'm happy with it. I don't care about the, the starlight. The Kashtira Tillament is not that cheap. Is it? Why is that expensive? Why is that expensive? Why is Tillament's Kashtira expensive? I've, because it's an ultra rare. You think it's going to be that expensive? I don't think so. Like, there's no way this card breaks the price of, like, a Sprite Elf, right? There's no way. I'm expecting 20 at Leon. Well, that, but that's, like, not even that bad. Like, if it's 20 at an overhyped price for a YCS because it was released two days before that... That's not that bad. That's okay. I don't think it's going to be that expensive. I don't think it's going to be that expensive. It's 35 right now. I personally don't think it's going to hold that price. I don't think this card is comparable to Fenrir. It's not even close. It's not even close to the play playability of Fenrir. There's no shot. This card is not close to Fenrir in terms of its playability. Okay, better buy now. Okay, not... If <laughs> hey, I know it's super funny. I know you're hilarious right now, but every single time I say something about a cart price, you're like, yep, doing the opposite. <laughs> That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Every tier player needs two to three. Yeah, but that's the same for Rhino Heart. And look at Rhino Heart's price. Pretty sure it will stay at 35 until Lyon is over. Yeah, but that's hype price then. I'm not really talking... I can't really predict the hype price. I cannot predict how desperate people are going to be to find this card on the Friday of YCS Lyon and how much they will be willing to pay in that situation, right? I, I can't really predict that. What I can say is that in the long term, this card is not going to be expensive because as soon as... I think as soon as YCS Lyon is over, people are going to look at their tier limit cards and be like, I don't want to play with you anymore. I'm expecting a ban list before I can enter a uh, another, another tournament. Like, because no one knows. I feel like after YCS Lyon, it might just be any day that we're getting a ban list. So I don't know, man. 
I think this card might be expensive for YCS Lyon and only for YCS Lyon, but no. Buying cases and selling on Friday seems like a good play. I mean, you can't do that if you're not a vendor. You can't sell at a YCS. It is not permitted. So, nope. That's not a good play. That's a good play if you're trying to get banned or get kicked off the venue. Then that's a good play. If that's what you're trying to do. Also, it doesn't seem like the most... Uh, also, it doesn't seem like the most ethical thing to do to pick up cases with the pure intention of uh, juicing people at, at a YCS. I don't feel like that's uh, a very desirable place to be in life. There's a, there's like a, there's a, the, you know, there's, yeah, there's better things you can do. It is a scummy move, yeah, it is a scummy move. Anyways, um, I personally, I'm not, I'm never really picking up any of the Starlights. I'm going to pick myself a playset of Gravekeeper's Inscription if they're not too expensive, but I don't plan on playing them anytime soon, so I'm probably going to wait on that. Uh, I'm not super excited about the, the Sargas XYZ, even though I don't think it's going to be expensive. I'm probably going to need a Arise Hard in, for, for Tier Element. I'm going to leave that card the hell alone. I'm probably going to need one planet, maybe, in, in tier limit. Maybe one. I'm going to need thrust things. Uh, I think Waybridge is super cheap, so I'm just going to pick it up. But I don't think it's... I, prob I mean, even then. If, if it's like 10, I don't even know if I'm going to pick it up. Because it might just be lower than that. For The gold pride stuff, I'm only going to pick up if it's very cheap. If it's expensive, I'm not going to do it. Uh, the ultras are kind of like, eh. I don't think any of the Ultras... I really don't think any of the Ultras are going to be insanely expensive. Like, you're probably looking at, like, Rise Hard, Tier Limits, Kosh Tira, and Big Welcome Labyrinth as the best Ultras. Probably. Right? Those three are, like, the best ones. Everything else should be, like, not that much. And then, yeah, I mean, everything else is... Yeah. And I don't think there's a super rare in here that can even get close to Magnemut. Just throwing that out here. I don't think the super rares in this set, honestly, probably the most disappointing slot. Because there's like, I want the Gishki. Some people will want the ship. The Bucephalos is good. Dogmatic Cartrix is good. That's like four good supers. The rest is pretty much garbage. I mean, not garbage, but, like, the rest is not exciting, right? There's, like, what do you think of Made to Order? Uh, do you mean the new TCG exclusive? I think that one's pretty bad, the more I think about it. Hold up. The more I think about this card, I think the worse it gets. The more I think about this card, the worse it gets. Um, target a card in your opponent's graveyard, banish it. Then you can add a card from your deck to your hand with the same name as that banished card. You can only activate one mate to order mermaid, mermaid outfit outfitter per turn. You know what my problem with this card is? It's, a, it's supposed to be like a power spell, right? It's a normal spell card, which means that you can pretty much only use it going second. I'm never putting this card in my deck going first. I'm never putting this card in my deck for going first because it just, like, it, how? How am I guaranteeing that this card works? Like, if I'm waiting for my opponent to use a hand trap, I can just use talents. I can use thrusting. It's a lot better. For going second, there's like a billion good po power spells that you can use instead. If you use Millers, maybe, but even then, like, using this card just for the off chance that you're using a Miller to mill five from your opponent to hopefully mill a card that you want to search with this is like, wh what are you trying to do? Like, what? why? <laughs> What's the point? I don't think, I think this card, the more I think about it, it sounds cute at first glance, but it's just garbage. And it's, it, it's, it's stupid. Because if they just made this card a quick play spell, 
if you made this card a quick play spell, it would have actually been an interesting card. You could have actually, like, uh, considered this card in, like, the tier limit deck for the tier limit mirror match, for example. Like, uh, trying to stop one of their uh, Ishizu, uh, no, one of their tier limit names, and even get a search out of it. Right? Would have been interesting. Imagine banishing your opponent's Shadol Fusion to search your own. This card would have been interesting, like, years ago. You're right. Like, <laughs> this card could have been something in some formats, like, at some point, right? But right now, this is just not up to the current standard. We have so many better, powerful spell cards that, you know, you're just not going to resolve it. And it's just not even... It doesn't even work. It doesn't even work if the target, like, gets removed from the graveyard. Like, I mean, that's just, the like, the, the biggest problem uh, as well. Like, if they have an Ishizu Shuffler or if they have a way to prevent it, it's not going to work. It's an awful card, I think. It's just overall. The, the, the idea is cool. The idea is cool, but the, the execution here was just, like, I don't know, careless. I, I don't know what they thought. I don't know if they think this is a good card, but this is not a good card. Like, no one is going to play this card, I think. No one is going to play this card unless... Like, in a different format, maybe. In a different format, maybe, where there's, like, a mirror match where, for some reason, this card is broken going second. If there's, like, a mirror match where somehow this is the best solution, where they put something into the graveyard that you need, and then, uh... Yeah. Maybe, but but I, don't, I don't really think it's... I don't think this card is on par with the current power level. I mean... This card literally comes out, this card as a normal spell card comes out in the same set as Thrusting and even to an extent like this card, right? And you compare this card's power level to Thrusting and the Gravekeeper spell, I don't think it's close. I don't think it's close. I'm gonna buy a playset for six cents. I mean, if you have hope in this card, you can pick it up. It's a super rare. It's gonna be worth nothing. It's not like we're talking about an investment here. Like, if you want to pick up the card and try it, go for it. It's not going to be... It's not going to cost anything. But I don't see this card performing. I don't... I don't see this card performing. Banish, engage, grab, engage. Yeah, maybe... Maybe it could have been a... Uh, maybe it could have been a card in Sky Striker Mirror matches in 2019. Maybe. But not in 2023. There's no deck right now. There's no deck right now where you would play this card. Well, yeah, I mean, okay, Sky Strike and Mirror Match, good point. If a deck like that is in the meta, then maybe you can consider it, right? It has, it has some interesting scenarios, right? Banish Ray, Search Ray, true, not bad. That is not a bad interaction. But right now, I, I'm not aware of any deck that, that warrants this card, right? Just not, right now, there's nothing for this. Right now, there's nothing for this. Banish, branded fusion, get branded fusion. Yeah, it has it has uses. It has uses. Absolutely, it can do some stuff. It can do some stuff. But I yeah. All right. Now. There were, uh, this was another weekend of regionals, and of course, this is the old format, quote unquote. Like, I don't really want to get into this too deep. There was one deck that I wanted to look at, which was the Mekanko Tier Limit, which we've talked about before. We've talked about beforehand how this deck is supposed to play, um, but it did win a regional in Germany. I don't know how big it was. I think they only played six or seven rounds, so it can't be that big, but it also isn't super small. Uh, the idea. The idea... Oh, yeah, Nets' deck I also wanted to look at. Um, the idea of the of the Mikanko cards in Tier Limit is the following. It's not Booba x Booba. No, that's not the idea. But is that Ohomi, by the way? Is that the actual artwork on Ohomi? I've never looked at it that way. Is that Mikanko Ohomi, or is that a different... Yeah, that's not the artwork. <laughs> that is not the actual artwork. Uh, anyways, the idea is that you use um, Mikanko Ohime 
only together with the quick play spell. You don't use any of the others. And uh, you just go Ohime effect, add the quick play, discard a tier limit, use the tier limit to summon Garura or Kikalos, whatever you want. Because Ohime discards for card effect. And then at any point, you can use the quick play spell to summon Ohime to make a uh, Beatrice with. So that's nice. Hello, guys. We have got, we got, we won the private with 125. What's the Google Doc? You can go exclamation mark spreadsheet. Uh, it's a collection of all the, of a lot of regional top index. You just have to go, on the bottom, you have to go to the newest week. And he played a pretty cool deck. And I'm short. Um, I played Mikanko Tillerman, so I went 7 0 to the deck. 7 0. One versus four sprites, one Tillerman. Um, Oh yeah, the list is maintained by Septo. Uh, so there's always a link to Septo's socials in the spreadsheet. So if you if you find the uh, spreadsheet useful, feel free to follow Septo on his channels. One Rika Salavalon and one Salaman Gray. Every game was a, every match was a 2-0. And in at least four of those matches, the Mikanko engine won me the match. So yeah, it proved itself. Um, okay, strong statement. I think said everything was 2-0 and the Mikanko engine was very good. Let's start with the common part of the deck. I'm main decking 7 bestials. In the sideboard are the second and, second and third copy of Saronir for the mirror match. Um, Did the, only play against one tier and one sprite, to be three fair. 3 element cards, 3 Shiren, 3 Wartens, 3 Merli. Nothing surprising here. Only 2 Rhino Hearts, since I do play another normal summon. So to keep my normal sum account at a maximum of six cards. Um, the spell and traps for the element cards for Paladino, one instant fusion, two scream and two Saliac. Yeah, yep. also pretty standard, you're increasing your numbers of those two to get better mills and stuff like this. Yeah, I know Jesse did a video on that, so shocking. I played one Herald of the Orange Knight since I do have a bigger amount of fairies in my deck. Oh, the, uh, the Ohime is also a fairy. Interesting. And only three Kalbeg, since Kalbeg is an actual interruption and you usually have enough bodies to play. Uh, Chibi, go on. Thank you for the raid. Welcome. Um, and Mill 5 is sufficient enough. You do not need a order Mill 5. But yeah, mm -hmm. one, two, three copies of Aido would be be an option for the deck for the next time. And then, for the spicy part of the deck, first of all, credits to Jesse Cotton, which uh, uploaded a video in which he introduced the Mikanko engine in the Chilomet deck. Um, I played three and five, the Manifest of Mikanko, one Divine of the Hammer, oh, and homie. two spells, inviting, uh, reflecting Rondo and the Mikanko ceremony. Um, basically, the Diviner is a rebound okay. target for Elf. This is pretty much the standard list for this that I've been seeing and since last week. And also Herald of the Archives to be able to search the Mikanko, which I did in one game where I milled the Divine of Beatrice and then rebounded it to get access to her. Um, she's able to break a lot of boards. Um, I broke every single sprite board with her. So, for example, you reveal her in the hand, add one Mikanko card, you add this one, and discard another card, which can be a Tillerman card to trigger the effect. So, the what I do want to say about this is I do think that this is a good card to draw in, in tier limits. My problem with this entire package is that you're playing, you're playing three good draws, which is the Ohime, because those are really good to draw. The other two are on their own completely useless, right? And of course, you have one diviner to find the Ohime. Like, it's, it's all right. Like, you can, like, uh, if you mill the diviner, you can bring it back and search the Ohime that way. You have, like, um, but still, I think it's not really a balanced um, engine to put into the deck because you're putting in, like, three really good cards and two completely dead cards. Um, this is why I ultimately, I considered this for my regional last weekend. Um, I considered playing this, but I think overall, it is more of a gimmick than actually, like, good. It's, it's, it is good, it's just not the best version, I think. Similar to, I mean, I ended up playing, like, the, the Nimble Sprite deck, which also I don't think is, like, the best version of the deck. 
probably. So it's kind of like that. It just feels like towards the end of the format, towards the end of the format, it feels like no one is really uh, actually trying to play standard Ishizu tier anymore. Everyone is trying to be fancy about it. And this is what this is like doing, basically. Moving forward. Moving forward, by the way, I don't expect this to see play in Tailament at all. Like, just, just in case you're wondering if this is going to be a thing or not, I don't think it will be. I think with, uh, with Photon Hypernova relieving, uh, releasing, we're going to have extreme space issues in, in Tailaments. Like, because you, there's, like, so many new cards that you also want to play in Tailaments. And this is not going to be making it into the deck, I believe. You can discard Maybe opponent. after a ban list. It, it could actually. It could actually be something that you absolutely play in tier limit after a ban list. It's 100% not a bad engine. I could see it. Right now, though, when tier limit is at full power, I think you have better cards to choose from. This one or the spell and traps to get a lot of effect. Then you can use this card to special summon here. So we have here on the field. Spanish this from Grave to mill the Eclipse Plan. What will happen now? You may want to crash with the Mikanko into an opponent's monster. Or something big, let's say Ambition. They take 2500 damage. Then in the battle phase you activate the effect of the program. Equip your equip spell from failure to any monster on the field, which is appropriate. And in the case of representing one you will choose. We're looking at Netz's deck after, the Mikanko Libromancer. For example, and then you can attack with this as well. So she's able to deal a lot of damage since he reflects damage and then takes a monster. Also, if your opponent bestials you, he has a level 6 body on board. You have a level 6 body on board. You take his level 6 bodies. You go for Beatrice. So every time you get bestial, you will have a free Beatrice on this. It is a good response to bestial. That is a that is a valid um, argument. Yeah. She single-handedly won me the final. For real. Oh, yeah, I um, believe you. My opponent I killed every single card from my hand and I just kept her out. He summoned her to control of the totally awesome and to uh, overlay and choose on top of the totally awesome. Then I passed with the Mikanko. Mikanko was a cheesy OTK archetype. I mean, the pure Mikanko deck is. The pure Mikanko deck is exactly that. But I, I mean, from the get go, no one has really been using pure Mikanko, right? So, yeah, that won me the. I know. Um, then extra deck, um, or main deck, four to three cards here. Extra deck, one Mud Dragon, one Garura, and three Gelamin Fusion. No targets of Helia, since you usually do not need him, so I just cut him to have space for another card in the extra deck. Um, the Xyz Monsters, Abyss Turner, three Dwarf, the Insta, pretty standard rank fours. You can debate if you want to play the Redoer, but I really like him since you're able to trigger the Siren and stuff like this. And he has a lot of attack points, so you can travel it soon with him. Then I played one Beatrice, and since I do have a lot of access to level 6 bodies due to the Uheim and the Diviner, I also decided to play a Wallow, and to have more uh, options in my x Yeah, and then... As I mentioned before, Hell for reborning Divine and stuff like this. Last one, the Ecladex from Herald of the Arclight, which I used for Divine to search for Uheim. Do you think it's better to play 2k colors now that Kashtira is a thing? You have to. You absolutely have to. Okay, then. Pink Dog standings. I play two triple tactic talents, which I usually side in going first in a mirror match, or if I play against Sprite or stuff like this. Three dog ruler no more. Again for Sprite, Thunderies. Okay, the side deck's probably relatively being. standard. Two bestials are on you. Um, that's my side theory for the mirror match. I side goes in going second in the mirror match, and when I draw a bestial to, together with a Nibiru, I bestial the kit colors from the opponent's graveyard. Ah, so the technique, the hidden technique. The I like it. After they summon Dweller, for example. Um, last sideboard cards. Three zombie That's two few zombie worlds. We need more. Other, we need more. One um, Tillerman Prime for going first. And 
finally, Konami announced in Pyro uh, Legendary Duelist Pack, so thank you for giving us some new volcanic support. I believe in you, Konami. Thank you. Um, and that's all. <laughs> okay. All right, hey. Now that's the that's the quote unquote boring use for the for the Mikanko package. Like, oh, slap him into the best deck already. Slap him into tier limits because they're level six and they discard for card effect. But now, based version based version three Mikanko edition nets. I think topped. Uh, I don't. I honestly, I don't know what to expect from this pile. I don't know what to expect from this pile. Let me let me uh, just. See. Hey guys, I'm from the disciples with Gabriel Nets uh, following his uh, top four. Top four finish at the prestigious Portsmouth Regional today yeah. with what? Uh, Sixty card Mikanko Libromancer Brave Token Adventure. I will figure it out. We'll figure, we'll figure an acronym. Uh, when you see the, the video, there's gonna be an acronym in the, in the thumbnail in the title yeah so it's working progress right to now. start off there's this image here <laughs> okay 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 okay. there's a gravekeeper's commandant right there there's a i see a gravekeeper's commandant hello anyway go on gabe so it's 60 cards yep uh let's go over it somewhat yep so liberal monster cards first yep uh tell me if i'm off camera the moon. uh three geek boy two agents three fires yep uh, three teleports, which are yep. basically more geek boys. Two field spell, one intervention, and one doom broker. Yep. Uh, normal. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. From answer ratios, I think the one different thing is the second agent. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. He searched this off his old day to tribute for doom broke. Sure. Okay. It happens. So I need one, one follow up. Also, right? agents, uh, agents very important. It's a war here, and our main combo line is for his old day. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, those cards are very, very good. That makes sense. And teleport being summoning level trees is important to make sure Rubini as well. Sure, that makes sense. <laughs> sure, uh, it definitely sure. makes sense. Sure, sure, sure makes that sense. makes sense. All right. Mikankos. Mikanko. Uh, Trio Hime, because this card is very, very good. Uh, sure. Basically, you can. It, it's a going second card as well, because it searches a Habas going second. Yep. And it's a ritual sure. guy in hand, so you can show for the Libra Mancers. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what makes the deck go together. Uh, one. Very enticing ad libs in this one. Hini and one Hare. Uh, this is part sus. of the combo. Yep. I probably should have. <laughs> they say sus. <laughs> Wait, why did they, Why are these sus? One Nini and one Hare. Uh, this is part sus. of the combo. <laughs> yep. I probably shouldn't play this card. This card is kind of shit. Okay. Uh, and then one, 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 two. <laughs> so uh, this one's reborn. This one's not. Nice. Just like puts down every single card on the table. Everyone, you're like, yep, 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 sure, yep, yep, sure. And then he puts down like the those mechanicals. You're like. Sus. <laughs> Why? This one so, is a ritual spell, someone got from hand. Sure. And this card is absolutely broken. Yes. So this, why do you play two? Because uh, I cited third because I didn't realize it was broken. Oh, by context, I didn't play a single game of this deck before round one today. I only did solo hands. <laughs> so solo hands. Hey. Dante, thank you for the five months. Appreciate you. Thank you for the support. It's bad because you search it anyway. But the more I play the deck, I'm like, this card is nuts. Should have made. <laughs> Libromancer, I sold. Griffin, Mikanko, absolutely broken. Uh -huh. Right, sick. Note uh, for next time. We play the stack, yeah? But, but yeah, uh, how about Spike? You can target a monster mm -hmm. in either person's field, bounce it, and summon this, and then this searches another one. So yep. going first, you search this to extend, going second, you search this to that stereo opponent. Sure. Very, very good cards. Makes sense. Also, you can boss your own Lava Golem. Nice. Lava Golem is a boss monster. More Lava Golem is boss. Love that. Uh, Three illusion and a souls because they're more ritual names for the liberal yeah, answers yeah, yeah. and they can send the brave cards. And then you draw cards, bro. Yeah, and like it's kind of a link. This is adventure too. Like our free material are important because it can Surely make it is, right? That makes his own yeah, that makes sense. Uh, one Benton, it's part of the combo. One Cyber Renard, and part of the combo. I'll do a very quick combo. Uh, two diviners and one. Yo, Tuisan, thank you for using your only prime available each month on me. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Welcome to the channel. Yo, Dogra. Yep. Kill. So the oh my god, what are we doing? is very good because it sends Arclight and searches any ritual and then it can be Baron. Yep. Can summon this back with uh, elf what are we doing? Gale uh, Dogger is sexual by Cupid Pitch, which is a combo we do. Sure. Okay. All right. There's. I'm. I'm. Just, I just have a question about the universe we're living in. Uh, Fairy, thank you for the three months. Appreciate that so much. Welcome back. I have a. I have an important question about the timeline that we are finding ourselves in right now because there have been two. Mikanko monsters being put on the table and they have been greeted with the word sus and then a Gale Dogra enters the deck profile and is greeted with the word 
sure that makes sense or something okay, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then like this dumb story. Which I'm like... No, I don't understand that. <laughs> <laughs> why is why are the why are the uh why are the Mikanko is sus but Gale Dogra is is I, like completely Christian. reasonable? Sure. Okay. Christian. Broken. It makes like Christian no, untargetable, what? undestroyable, and with three omnis around it. What legend has it is Gabe's favorite card. It, it is one of my favorite cards, yeah. Yes. Speaking of my favorite cards, brave cards, <laughs> uh three rides, mm -hmm. this, mm. Enchantress, mm. Griffin, this, Draco Bat, and Magic Arm. <laughs> Cannot attack unless you control an adventure token. You can only use each of the following effects of magic core warrior of the relics once per turn. If you control an adventure token, you can spare some discard from your hand. At the end of the battle phase, if you want to I I see it's a warrior. Okay, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> Is it because it's a warrior? Yes. Yeah. Okay, nice. Is and it's fire warrior. Oh so basically uh real talk though. Wait, I mean, the fire doesn't matter, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> that brave plus any monster is dissolved. Yeah, because you summon fire matter? and search this. Especially this, and like the, the, the token. Oh, it matters for Renaud. For monster makes uh, flame swords, right? Yeah, that makes sense. And then this makes Zolde. Yeah, and that's is for is Zolde full combo. Yeah. Okay, cool. Who would have thought? Uh, small world. Now this is sus. Every deck that has to play small world to be consistent. Uh, it's probably not a great deck. <laughs> it's the it rule of thumb. Like small world in itself is not a bad card, but if your deck needs small world, your deck's probably not that great. Days without small world. world. Exactly. Uh, do I know the bridges? No. no. Did I play this deck before? No. no. I, I saw you with the calculator though. That's all that I, I opened the calculator uh, 10 minutes before the round mm -hmm. one and I just winged it. Rate that. Uh, I searched Lava Golem against the Sword Soul guy. Rate funny. that. Again, rate that. Uh, Trip Prep, because it searches Illusion or Ohime. Rate that. True Lava Golem. Boss Music. I won my last round by summoning Lava Golem. Bouncing the Lava Golem. Summoning the Lava Golem again. Bouncing the Lava Golem. Lava Golem Arabesque is busted. Damn. Very funny. <laughs> and uh, the non-engine. The, the actual non-engine. Uh -huh. It's two talents. It's one Imperm. <laughs> it's one Tree Swarm. And one Magnemot. We would like to talk that Gabe is not a stacker. Nah, that's He does not cheat. So basically, this was three Imperms. And then, I, when doing small road bridges, I realized I needed uh, a level 6 dark. Sure. And then I was like, shit. But I didn't want to... <laughs> Best reason ever to play Bestials this format. Write that down. Write that down. That's... That is the number one reason to play a Magnemoot this format is... Uh... <laughs> I needed that for a small world bridge. I didn't have four spots, so I cut two Imperms for two. Bro, if I'm playing against this deck and you Bestial me, I'm gonna be mad pissed. And what a good. Uh, I think I resolved this like an like, extender one. Sure. Uh, okay. The fact that there are monsters is relevant to small world, though. No yeah, world. that makes sense. So yeah, that is sixty cards. Don't Crazy say it makes sense. No, nothing makes sense. I'm confused. One. Now, what is the Gravekeeper's commandment about? Is that a small world thing you can add it with? Oh, that's probably the reason, right? That has to be the reason, right? The reason has to be I can small world search Necro Valley. Extra deck. Yes. The Keep technology has gone too far. It's part of the combo. That's the guy. Uh, two Arclights. Is it part of the combo too? It is part of the combo. That's amazing. Savage. Also part of the combo. That's amazing. Baron. Sometimes it's part of the combo. Yeah. Uh, Link Monsters. Only if you want it to be. That's Tur crazy. Turbini is very cool because there's a lot of level 3s, so you can mm. like use two Geek Boys, or Geek Boy plus a hair, or Geek Boy plus a, uh, the Water Girl, and Dump Enchantress. Mm -hmm. So this is very cool. Uh, cross Sheep. Pro shouldn't have played this. Uh, someone who once didn't need it. Not part of the combo. Should have been a Unicorn. I really missed Unicorn. Ah, uh, okay. Because I didn't play the game, so I only played the combo Just cards. Has. Yeah, that I makes sense. I didn't play a single like, utility. Uh, Flame Swords Man. Yes. Boss Man. Yo, my guy, he's a warrior, that's crazy. Elf, this is very important, it means you can summon the Divine or the Gale Dogra back. Uh, oh, even if he is brave, so yeah, you can still yeah. get the effect. Mm -hmm. And it protects the creature from targeting. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Isolde, Boss Woman. The Woman. <laughs> uh, Donner, I summoned this one, so it's decent. What's it do? Uh, it pops. It's a dragon. Nice, cool. It, it gets like two random monsters and pop. Sick. Uh, IP? Damn, uh, that's a star like crazy. 
I, the end board finishes on this. <laughs> Celine, never summoned it. Access code, never summoned it. We don't need it, damn. And Apollo, summoned a lot. Damn. I'm glad I played this, because I didn't, I didn't play it until yesterday. Damn, okay, fair play. And now... So, so this is... I, so I saw this pre-event and it was amazing. And as you can see, it's brilliant. I, yeah. put, I put a lot of thought into this. Exactly. One. Why one? Because the search for is Mole Road, so I can search Necro Valley. Do I know the bridge for Small Road? No. No. But, Fully don't. but in theory, it makes sense. Yeah, and then to Necro Valley. Yep, makes sense, sure. Cool. And then... Very cool, very nice. Bench is Zombie World for Flounder. Sure, very nice. Cool. And then Terraforming Set Rotation for them. Very cool, very <laughs> it kinda, nice. It comes together. Very cool, very nice. Not enough Zombie World. One. The third, the, the third. third, the third. One. But that's at one. One. It's also one. Yeah, yeah. One, because I was like, shit, I have no back row. We have no, and we're in the south. How many back row decks did you play? One. Oh, okay. See, that's all you need. One for one. One. So when you come. One seems to be the number of this profile. That's probably this, the word that's been said the most. Against Flunder, instead of searching Christia, you just search Lancia. Sure, okay, makes sense. Yep, sure, one. Two. One, yep, sure. The that's your main one. Exactly, that sure, makes sense. Sure, one, yep. That makes sense. Sure one, yep, the makes sense, one, one sense. Because, it's very because we learned that it's very yep, good sure. going second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there we so, go. Uh, so let me show you, like, really, really quick. Uh, in... <laughs> Why is there six more minutes? What's happening? So, Geek Boy plus <laughs> any of, like, the three rituals work. Uh, sure. That's our delusion. All right. You ready? Yeah, okay. we're ready. Let's go. Speed run this. Speed run. Three, two, one. All right. Geek Boy, review Doom Broker. Damn, that's quick. That's quick. Fire. Oh, I already cheated. <laughs> Crazy. Um, Field spell. spell. Fire. Fire. Fire gets Asian. Yeah. Okay, we know this. Oh, do you make the fire guy? Yeah. And then you summon the warrior. Then, he's on the then you summon the warrior. Yeah, That's the crazy. Look at you. Oh, and then you add the other warrior. Exactly. Damn. That's right. Uh, you play Soul Day. Yep. It's always so funny. <laughs> I had a smile on my face the whole day. Playing. Send Arabesque, so so. special Renard. Oh, so good. So happy. I am. Oh wait, let me count the guys to get like six of the graveyard on there. Uh, no. Oh, okay. So, like, you summon them out and... Uh, bro, this deck has 0% win rate going second. Literally. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's the fire guy? It's just the flame swordsman link monster. It's a basically a vanilla. Sure. And you have us, bounce them out. Sure. And summon the pirate. Uh -huh. Pirate triggers to get uh, fire dust. Mm -hmm. You summon them out, you have a fire watcher. Mm -hmm. Now there's a tuner. Oh, is it free? What? And it was free, right? Yeah, yeah. So damn, damn, okay. Uh, and then you keep it in your pack, so it can be five. Yeah. You fire dance. Lava so. Golem increases win rate going second to 10%. Yeah, true, it's at least 10%. On the Harry back. And then you pitch a Harry. For... You make more spoilers. Wait, the Cupid yeah. pitch line, I haven't the... seen it. The guy. And you get a Gale Dogger. Yeah. And now we're cooking. And now you're just like, no, some Gale Dogger is good, right? Yeah, it's like, oh, you know, Gale Dogger is 600 defense. Why is it 600 defense? Uh, usually you have to link it off. Uh, if you use a Brave card. Yeah, yeah. If you have Brave here, you have gone reduce with pitch, become level 3, and go pitch and Brave for each barrel. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm just doing it on one. Usually you can That's me the Brave. Yeah. So I go Elf. Oh, yeah, I'll do that, right? Oh, uh, like, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you go fast. Uh, you shoot both. <laughs> and you get to Ohiman. Oh, and homie. To Bentham. Sure. So basically, what I'm saying like, it doesn't matter which one of those three will. You, start, you always get through, yeah, yeah. If you have one of them here, you search souls and souls like two draws. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, you can also like do this and build and increase and then like more cards, but like, it's almost fun here. Yeah, yes. So we're, <laughs> we came here for entertainment. I came yeah. here for you to video. Exactly. exactly. And what do you do? I don't enter it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you'll go for the Crimson Vest. And you get the Broker. Yep. And then yeah, Christia. Ben Tang gets Christia. And then Don't Broker gets this. And how many um, fairies do you get now? Three. Four. You have four. So it's Christia, Double High Road, and uh, Cupid Pitcher. Oh, Cupid Pitcher. That's how I get this. And then you go. Uh, okay, Matt. Uh, so you discard usually uh, one of those. Shut the fuck up. Yes. Yep. Crazy. You get the. You have to turn on you. You summon on him. Yep. You use this. Shoot down Brongo. Wait, what's the fourth fairy? You, you have, have a homie? Cool. Uh, so this is the next deal. So you, you have two heralds? Sure. What's and the fourth fairy? Do we already have a fairy? Nice. Oh my. And then you go, oh, oh, Benton and, and what? Oh, Cupid sure. Pitch. So you have, oh, this is the next deal. God. This is the only negative with Intervention. This is only the Savage. Uh, you have Christian. And the Christian can be targeted to the Elf and you yeah. can destroy the card effects. So if you did uh, this this way, you could also have ended on a bit different by going uh, cross ship there. Yeah. You could have used the other normal and then drawn two pitch too. Yeah. If you have uh, Souls or Indian Extender, you end, or if you start the Brave, you end with this one AP and better here. So yeah, that is basically the combo. So, did you do it today? Honestly, I had an absolute plan. I came here without a ticket. Yep. Got in. Yep. And then play a lot of cards for all the day. Yep. Good time. And now you have content. And we have content. That's crazy. Beautiful. All that we need is an acronym. We speak all Sus. <laughs> this... This is like a deck that this deck feels like a deck from this year's national season. That's all it feels like. <laughs> what would you do if you face this soup? I'd probably lose the dice roll and lose to it. I'm gonna be honest. That's what I probably do. That's what I would probably do. 
Can we have the remix and wombo combo back? Oh yeah, right. I forgot. I for gore. Yes, you can. Hold up. Uh, da, da, da. channel points, manage rewards. All right, they are back. They are back. Also, hey, let me let me adjust the sub goal since we have we have kind of we have uh, lost a couple subs over the weekend. So, Monka, let me let me tone it down a little bit. So you guys can hit one. Happy feet! Wombo combo! Joshua Schmidt. Joshua Schmidt. Joshua. Joshua. Too expensive? It's not too expensive. You see what happens? Joshua Schmidt. Joshua Schmidt. Joshua Schmidt. Joshua. 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 Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. Joshua now has perfect information. No, I'm poor again, but 100% worth it. I'm glad you, I'm glad you enjoyed that. I'm glad you, you, you feel like you spent your points well. Joshua, Smith, Joshua, Smith, Joshua, 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 Smith. Still very expensive. I mean, look, hey, we, we've had. Some of you might remember a time when uh, when these were cheaper, and this it has as the channel have grown, as the channel has grown, which I I mean I'm very thankful for, but as the channel has grown, we do have to uh, we do have to adjust this because there has been some dark times when these were cheap. <laughs> Bro, Wombo Combo started at five k. You cannot imagine Wombo Combo at five k at this point. This this was not. Uh, th those were the dark ages. Those were the dark ages. <laughs> Happy feet. See, even at 50k. Happy feet. See, do you, know, do you see what happens? Do you see what happens even at 50k? <laughs> Yep. That ain't Falco. Have you seen Trishula's channel point rewards? I have not. I have not. All right, and that's that's pretty much it for the um Happy feet. Happy combo combo. That ain't How? Why so expensive? Now you know why. Now you know why. Um, anyways, I, that's it. I wanted to, that is all I wanted to cover from these. I've looked through these this morning. There's really not much to talk about. Literally, uh, those were the only two. Joshua Schmidt. 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 Joshua 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 Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. Y'all don't want to be. Joshua, Joshua, Schmidt, Joshua, 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 Schmidt, Joshua, 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 there's no way it has to be more expensive, right? There's no way. There's no way you're doing this again. There's no way you're doing this again. It's 94k. There's no way. Hey, look. There's no shot. All right. Joshua, 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 Joshua. Joshua now has perfect information. This beast is taking down. Joshua's got it. Oh, perfect. It all comes down to this. Joshua Schmidt goes for it. Left with almost no cards. This is over. Joshua Schmidt. You've done this to yourself. Joshua, Joshua, Joshua Schmidt. You've done this to yourself. This is why you can't have nice things. 
No, I'm not gonna. Nah, I'm not gonna let. I'm not gonna. I'm not. We're not gonna talk about it. We're not gonna. We're not gonna discuss. We're not gonna discuss. Nope. Nah. That was great smile. <laughs> Inflation hits once again. Inflation hits. Inflation hits. 100k is too much. No, it's not. No, it's not. We just had freaking five people redeem it at the same time. Nah. There is a very simple way. There is a very simple way of getting the remix. It's very simple. We do it at every single sub goal. So if everyone just checks for a free prime, easy clappers, you get to hear the remix. But... We can't do it like this. It doesn't work like this. I, I can't really, I literally can't freaking start a sentence. <laughs> Someone give eight subs. We need it now. <laughs> Wait, what are you all spamming hydrate for now? <laughs> Trying to make me drown. <laughs> What's the point of this? Oh my god. Joshua Schmidt. Joshua Schmidt. Joshua. Joshua. Joshua Schmidt. Joshua Schmidt. Joshua Schmidt. There's no way I have to disable hydrate. There's no way hydrate is the problem right now. I can't see chat anymore. Oh my god. I mean, I don't care, bro. I don't care. I don't care. I'm just gonna let y'all waste all your points on hydrate. I'm literally playing you guys. I don't care. I'm playing you guys. I, I, I'll sit here, let you guys waste all of your points, and you guys are never gonna be able to afford a remix. You are literally being unreasonable right now, chat. You are being unreasonable. I want you to know that. I want you to know you are being unreasonable. <laughs> Bro, drink is the contract. <laughs> Murdoch Nix, thank you for the tier one. I personally don't understand why you chose this moment to subscribe to this channel of the peak content, apparently. <laughs> but I, I appreciate it a lot nonetheless. Thank you. Joshua. You guys are literally messing with my power. You can't, you, can't, you guys can't, you just can't compete. I'm just like gonna disable it. It all comes down to this. Joshua Schmidt goes for it. Almost no card. Hero Radio, thank you for the prime and the losses. Thank you for the seven gifts. And yes, I am a man of my word. So here you go. Joshua Schmidt. Joshua Schmidt. Joshua, 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 Schmidt. Joshua Smith, Joshua Smith, Joshua Smith, Joshua Smith. Joshua. Alright, there you go, Pepe D. Joshua, but I, I promise Joshua, after Joshua. that. Oh. Oh no, I scammed. I scammed. Oh no, I scammed. Uh, I forgot that if I switch scenes. Oh no. Yeah, there you go. We have to start over. I scanned, I scanned, That was my bad, I forgot. I just wanted to go full screen, but it's it's not in the full screen. Uh, no, my bad, my bad. Joshua Smith, Joshua Smith, Joshua Smith. Joshua, 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 Joshua. But this is the last one. Joshua, 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 Joshua. Infinite 39, thank you for the four months. Appreciate it. This truly is one of the streams of all time. This is one of the moments again. I don't know how. I also don't know what does it. I don't know what causes these moments to happen. Because it's like, it happens every once in a while that, that, like, you guys go crazy. I don't really understand it. I don't really understand when this happens. The hive, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes it's just like, sometimes, I don't know if it's my fault. I don't know, maybe it's my fault. Maybe I make you guys go crazy. <laughs> uh, all right. We are summoning a ban list? 
Man, I can't... I can't wait for the time when uh, YCS Lyon is over. And we are once again in the Monka situation of waiting for a ban list. Because I don't think it's going to happen before the YCS, but maybe after. Who knows? Remix 10k if you win, Lya. For one stream. But I, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know, this might be a mistake, because then I can't win. Oh no. See, the problem is then... The problem is then... If, if I win, I also lose. If I win, I also lose. Which is a problem. <laughs> Alright, hey. What do you think? Do we talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! again? Or we're just talking about remixes? Now, chat. Like, what do you want? I don't understand. <laughs> um, because there is one thing I want to do. And that is, I've, I've, once again, my food is already cold. My food is already cold, but... Uh, we do have lunch break now. We have a quick lunch break and then we start testing some Photon Hypernova. Is what I say we do. So, we continue our journey through the history of the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. Not this one, we've already watched this one. The next one is only like 20 minutes. Dual monster. So we're gonna watch this together while I have my food. And then we're gonna do Photon Hypernova. Um, and then we're gonna do Photon Hypernova testing. Is my plan for today. Or deck building rather. Because I want to build some of the decks that are not tier limit. Uh, for everyone. For everyone who hasn't been here. When we watched the previous parts of this. This is the. Uh, the history of the. Yu-Gi-Oh! OCG. Like the very beginning of Yu-Gi-Oh! Basically. And we are. Uh, can someone remind me where we were last time? It's like the release of. What was it? Like, uh, what was the most recent stuff that came out? What are we talking? Exodia was limited. Uh, I don't know. Konami had big plans for the year 2001. It was the year that Yu-Gi-Oh! would go global, expanding into Ooh. foreign markets with dubbed versions of Studio Gallop's Dual Monsters anime localized translations of the original manga, and the first run of promotional cards advertising the series overseas. At home in Japan, there would only be two reprint sets that- This just feels so much better at 1.25. They just have a 1.25 voice. This year, but still four yeah. core Ik expansions and two, two structure months. decks, Appreciate finally that. bringing the card pool up to over 1,000 unique cards, although most of them were just pack filler. After the Metal Raiders reprint also, set- Also, what the hell? Why is it called the Son of Pokemon? Yu-Gi-Oh! National Championship that was held insult? that March. Wanting to avoid a repeat of the Tokyo Dome riots, Konami took care not to sell any exclusive merchandise at the championship, despite premium packs being available at Jump Festa and other events. Even so, the scale of the 2001 Nationals was bigger than anything before it. The preliminaries consisted of over 4,800 duelists competing at 300 stores across Japan. This the is winners crazy. of which do they still hit these numbers? Do they still hit these numbers uh, in in YCS Japan? Like, is it still 4,000? gained entry to one of seven regional championships, and the top eight from each regional went on to the national finals at the Tokyo Big Site Convention Center. Nationals was won by Okamoto Masahiro, whose deck was later reported in V-Jump magazine. His deck consisted of 19 monsters, 15 magic cards, and 6 traps, oh. plus an 11... Peep the goo. Gemini Elf, Witch of the Black Forest, Saint Magician, which is Magician of Fate, Maneater Buck, Didi Warrior, Mask of Darkness, Penguin Soldier, Giant Soldier of Stone, nice one of... Dream P.R.O., which is, I think, Dream Clown. Summon Skull. Thunderbolt. Regeki, Dark Hole, Pot Agree, Change. <laughs> too Graceful. Too Reborn. Too Duster, Heavy Storm, Fissure. All right. Good 11 stuff. cards side deck. The runner-up at Nationals was Eguchi Yasushi, whose primary strategy was using Ultimate Offering and Witch of the Black Forest. Third place by Takazawa Tomohiro with a Cannon Burn deck. And fourth by Kato Tetsuya. None of these other deck lists were published, but the top three duelists all received commemorative prize cards featuring their photographs imposed onto the artwork and effects related to their deck. I've never seen this before. These prize cards. They Okamoto's must have been. They must have been. What a typical good stuff deck looked like at the time. There Yo, isn't a coherent unified slam. end combo directing the deck. <laughs> Welcome to Rendama. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for the three months. Welcome back. 
deck's construction. It's a combination of the best cards available, and most of the cards... This is, like, so cool, the fact that they sometimes have, um personalized price support we don't have that anymore but i know that other games have that like for example uh the, and this once again this might be me being misremembering some stuff but i think in pokemon if you win the pokemon tcg world championship they sell your deck or they used to at least like your deck was being sold as like a starter deck kind of deal uh which is really cool and also in, like, if you win the video game, it's like they distribute some of your Pokemon that you used uh, in, like, other events and stuff like that. It's very cool. <laughs> no, my deck. Well, not that way. They don't take your deck and sell it to someone. <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> That'd be funny, though, if they just took your deck and sold it. That are at one to two copies are there either because they're restricted or because the other copies are sitting in the side deck waiting to get swapped in. Gemini Elves serves as the deck's level four beater. Maneater Bug, I Penguin guess Soldier, I and Dream that wrong, yeah. control options. <laughs> they don't summon take Demon your deck as the tribute summon endgame. And then you have an assortment of game changer magic and trap cards like Thunderbolt and Ultimate Offering, plus draw, search, and retrieval from Graceful Charity, Witch of the Black Forest, and Saint Magician. When you sit down to play a deck like this, you are thinking about how to use your search and draw options to dig out specific monsters, but you're also thinking about setting up defense in the form of Messenger of Peace, Magic Jammer, and Feather Duster. At this point, Psycho Shocker was limited to one, so his absence wasn't exactly unusual for the time period, but it is interesting to note that Okamoto didn't have any Rings of Destruction, while some of the other finalists did. The second national championship was an important moment for Konami, because it was relatively unremarkable. Everything went according to plan. Yu-Gi-Oh! Fever was only growing in 2001, and Konami was working on negotiating a deal to expand overseas into foreign language markets, so the last thing they wanted was a repeat of the first nationals during a time when the bubble hadn't popped yet. At this point, Pokemon had long recovered from the Porygon shocks of 1997, being on the tail end of the gold and silver block of the card game. Monster Collection was already imploding, as they had attempted their disastrous set rotation back in September of the previous year, so many Moncole refugees were fleeing to other games. And Pokemon was- What part of the series is it? Uh, it says part 13, but it's not all Yu-Gi-Oh. It says it's overall part 13 of the history of Japanese TG TCGs, but I think Yu-Gi-Oh started at like part 10 or 11. So it's like uh, part number, the, the technically the fourth part of Yu-Gi-Oh, I think. I can link you the video, yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh's biggest rival for absorbing those refugees. Konami needed that win. What nobody needed was their April expansion, Spell of Mask. This set introduced a number of powerful effects like Torrential Tribute, a trap card version of Black Hole that activates in response to a summon, and United We Stand, the most powerful equip magic card up to that point, granting 800 attack and defense for every face-up monster you control. So long as you had at least two monsters out, it was better than a Demon's Axe. There was also a magic trap zone equivalent to United We Stand, Power of Mages, and a quick play removal card offering to the dead that it's destroyed a face-up monster in exchange for skip- Sakio, thank you for the seven months, appreciate you. ...skipping your next draw phase. However, all of these cards were trivial However... compared to Card of Safe Return, oh, a permanent God. magic card that caused you to draw a card every time a monster was special summoned from your graveyard, turning every revival effect from a neutral exchange to a plus one. Revival effects weren't that prominent at the time, so you couldn't just throw it into good stuff, and players built dedicated Safe Return combo decks instead. This resulted in Safe Return Exodia, the next one-turn kill deck. How Safe Return Exodia worked was that you would first get stuff into the graveyard with Graceful Charity or Painful Choice, then play Card of Safe Return, then use Premature Burial or Monster Reborn to start drawing off of Safe Return. Your one normal summon would be Cannon Soldier, who would blow up the revived monsters. Ideally, you would revive Witch of the Black Forest or Critter so you could use their search effects to tutor Exodia pieces to hand. Any additional cards of Safe Return you played would stack, so that you could draw two or three cards off of each revival, and you could also- I'm just- just out of curiosity, how many of you guys remember- how busted this card was in Zombie Sworn. Who was around? Just just asking for a friend. How many remember also that? Also thin the deck with Thunder Dragons and bounce Premature Burial back to hand with Hurricane so you could cast it again Bruh. and draw two or three more cards. Some crazy people actually ran hand obliteration, but then they risked losing Exodia pieces. So to compensate for that, they'd have to set backup soldier. I was playing that deck. I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm telling you, I was not able to play that deck because I was like 13 years old. I could not afford it, and other, people's, other people had it. It was so busted. ...to the opponent to get those pieces back in hand and win the game. In general, Safe Return Exodia aims to win on the very first turn, but passing wasn't the end of the world unless it was against another Safe Return Exodia, in which case the mirror match was basically just competitive coin flipping. A variant emerged soon after called Cure Burn, Ooh, which cut out the Exodia pieces and ran Big Bang Girl instead, a new effect monster from Spell of Mask that burned the opponent for 500 LP every time her controller gained life. So they'd use that draw power to dig through their deck for heals like Dian Keto and build up incredible life totals while burning the opponent down to nothing. Cure Burn
I swear to God, if one of you says Booba because of the Dian Kedo art, I'm going crazy. And there it is. Oh my God. You. Oh my. Burn had a lot of tools to work with, like a trap card called Blessing of the Right, Holy as Elf I said, it healed you 300 points for each monster in play. At the time, it was ruled that every instance of 300 was a separate heal. So if we you weren't, five... but now we are. No, that happened before I said it. That popped up in chat while I said it. That did not. You did not do that specifically. Maybe some of the people that do it now, but Funatsu. 96 you did that before i said that monsters on no 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 Big they did that before i said it specifically opponent for 2500 up to a maximum of 7500 if you set three blessings the resolution of blessing was later changed in one of the rule revisions so that the heal happened all at once making this no longer possible in the modern game april also brought with it limited edition three a mail order pack of cards available through weekly shonen jump magazine that came in three versions yugi jonochi and kaiba each pack containing three fixed cards this type of mail order pack had been done before, both in Yu-Gi-Oh! and in other games like Pokemon, but Limited Edition 3 was the first time the contents were highly competitive. In particular, the Jonochi pack introduced one of the most powerful magic cards in the game, Scapegoat. Scapegoat was a card from the manga that summoned four token monsters, a mechanic new to Yu-Gi-Oh! where pieces from outside the game were used to represent a monster created during the game itself. Ooh. The sheep tokens would be summoned in new, new game mechanic. defense mode and had zero attack and defense, and could not be sacrificed Video sounds too low. Summon. It is very and low, yeah, but I can't... It also it's, stopped you from summoning it other monsters I, during the turn it was cast. No, However, it's because max, it was a quick play magic card, you could yeah. cast it on your opponent's turn to get around that limitation, joining Call of the Living Dead and the recruiter monsters in an exclusive club of cards that could summon during the opponent's turn. Scapegoat made many decks resistant to beatdown, as the only ways of inflicting piercing damage were through relatively weak cards like Mad Sword Beast and Meteor Strike, so one going off could steal the tempo of a game from beatdown in an instant. At the time, this was effectively seen as gaining life points, since you were just summoning four defensive walls, but other use cases for Scapegoat quickly emerged. You could sacrifice them to Cannon Soldier for a 2000 point burn, use them with United We Stand for a 3200 attack point buff, potentially a 4000 point one with another monster out, and ultimately they would become targets for level manipulation mechanics that needed level 1 monsters. The Yugi pack brought in another manga card, Spirit Mirror, localized as Mystical Ref Panel internationally. Wait. This was a trap capable of transferring a magic. Didn't we get Mystical Ref Panel like years later? Effect from one player to another, which could be used to steal the draws from Pot of Greed and Graceful Charity, or to bounce the discard effect of Delinquent Duo and Confiscation back to the opponent, along with a number of other uses. We got that the way fact later. That it specifically only worked on effects that targeted a single player resulted in some complexity to whether or not it could be played at all, as effects that targeted both players weren't applicable, and also resulted in numerous unpredictable interactions. A decade later, a combo would be discovered with Into the Void, which allowed you to draw a card if you had three or more in hand, in exchange for discarding your entire hand during the end phase. Players would use Into the Void and chain Spirit Mirror to it to reflect their own magic card's effect onto the opponent and force the opponent to discard their hand. May 2001 brought with it a new ban list. At this time, Safe Return Exodia was the more popular deck of the format because it was less dependent on traps, while Cure Burn had a big weakness to Psycho Shocker and Good Stuff struggled with the Exodia Psycho matchup. Shocker. Neither Safe Return decks were as consistent as Last Will Exodia, but the fact that Spell of Mask had generated two OTKs that could both go off on the first turn was controversial. So of course, the May ban list hit United We Stand. Wait. Wait, what? Makes sense to yeah, me. Konami hey, it's Konami. Limited United We Stand because apparently Maha Vilo is too strong for this world. Moved Chaos Pod and Backup Soldier from Limited to Semi-Limited, Unlimited Last Will, and touched nothing else. Bear in mind, Last Will's text hasn't actually changed. It's Bro, what is the direction that Last Will is going? Like, what the hell is this? They limited the card because it's bad shit broken. And now they semi and then unlimit? What the hell is that? It's just been turned into a normal magic card by the splitting of all the magic cards into normal, continuous, and quick play. Now, the real reason United We Stand was hit was, probably, because of its combo potential with Scapegoat. But that wasn't what players were worried about. Bumping Backup Soldier up from 1 to 2 made Safe Return Exodia a lot safer, and Unlimiting Last Will greatly strengthened both Exodia and Big Bang Burn decks. A number of Japanese players refer to this as the beginning of another dark age for the game, because Exodia's <laughs> first turn kill potential was too stable, and Konami would not modify the banlist again until the end of Series 2 a year later, resulting in an 8 month long solitaire A year format. later! During this period, there were <laughs> no not a lot of high impact additions to the card pool, although there were some reprints in the form of the Yugi and Jonochi structure decks, which included single copies of many staples like Pot of Greed, Graceful Charity, Backup Soldier, Ultimate Offering, and Scapegoat, among others. And while the OCG format was in this period of stagnation, Monster Collection imploded on itself in the aftermath of its first rotation. Pokemon adopted its new card backs and started a gradual collapse that would take years for it to recover from, and the Digimon Hyper Coliseum card game was booming off the back-to-back -back success of the Digimon Adventure and Adventure Zero Two anime series, having just broken out of an oppressive lockdown format with a new wave of cards that were uniquely immune to specific control effects. Surprisingly, Bandai had become Konami's strongest domestic rival. 
Although as Konami expanded overseas, they would quickly surpass the Digimon card game on a global scale, and the Japanese tabletop market as a whole was on the brink of a recession that would take about three years to clear up. The sixth core set of Series 2, Labyrinth of Nightmare, dropped on July 21st. Ooh, I know the that theme one. of this set was built around Bakura's occult deck from the Battle City arc of the manga, including his signature cards Dark Necrofear and Ouija Board. These cards were flavorful and had mechanically interesting effects, which is to say they were very, very bad. The main stars, as far as the players were concerned, were original cards that had nothing to do with the manga or the anime. Dark Hero Zombire was a 4-star beater with 2100 attack that was unable to attack players directly, and every time it destroyed a monster... Is that text part of its artwork in the OCG? I've never noticed it. Does it have that... Uh, does it have this in the, in the TCG? I don't think it has its name on it. ...by battle, its strength would drop 200 points. They removed so it was weaker it. But than why? Why did that one have to get drawback like, exchange? Removed. But even after one reduction, still tied with Gemini Elf, making it last more turns and enabling one for two exchanges, or allowing Zombire to survive the opponent's why turn was that and contributed changed? for summon a demon or Psycho Shocker after that. Zombire was also a fusion component in another powerful monster, the last warrior from another planet, which right. when special summoned destroyed all other monsters you controlled and blocked both players from summoning any more monsters. While Last Warrior had no immunity to magic or trap-based removal, it was possible to special summon it outside traditional fusion, through Devil Franken, and while the opponent could still set monsters against it, they could not flip summon or tribute summon. The only way those monsters could turn face up was by being attacked by Last Warrior, so the number of monsters that could seriously affect it was small, mainly consisting of the various pots and pods in the game. Rounding out the key monsters was Bazoo the Soul Eater, a 1600 attack 4-star that, once per turn, could banish up to 3 cards from the graveyard to increase its attack by 300 points for every card removed. This buff would last until the end of the opponent's turn, and allowed Bazoo to alternate between 1900 and 2500 attack on any given turn, strong enough to slay Psycho Shocker and stalemate with the summoned demon. While it was hard to sustain that banishment cost long term at this point, you really only needed Bazoo for one turn, as an answer to Psycho Shocker that wasn't named DD Warrior. From the set's traps was Royal Command, a continuous trap card that negated the activation and effects of all flip monsters. As a successor to Imperial Order, Royal Command was useful for siding against flip effects, specifically mill cards like Cyberpunk. How do you ever have Royal and Command and Imperial Order on the same, and like, sentence? That was pretty much it, at least on launch. 53 cards like, they look similar, that's about played. it, but the one causes the trauma and the other one is garbage. ...much later, when it was long out of print. Cards like Jogen the Spiritualist and Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer that had powerful individual effects like blocking all special summons, but didn't have much of a role in a format dominated by Exodia and Burn. The big gimmick of the set, Ouija Board, was completely unplayable when it first came out because it was an alternate win condition that required you to first activate a continuous trap card and then spend four turns placing four specific cards from your deck in order, with all of them leaving the field if even one of them got hit with any kind of Death. removal. Do we have those as lost arts? Were aiming to win on the very the, first the, turn they the got. Spirit messages? Safe Return Exodia had something in the ballpark of a 50% chance to win every time it took a turn, and you were supposed to somehow last through five of those? Yeah, not happening. That July also marked the launch of Duel nope. Monsters 5 Expert 1. This was the first rules-accurate Yu-Gi-Oh! game, including every card up through Curse of Anubis, and while it inherited most of the gameplay modes of its predecessors, including a campaign where you defeated each opponent a certain number of times to advance to the next stage, it also introduced a new in-game calendar system where different events would happen on different days We just days have final... Week, well, I know we have final, jump every Tuesday but as, as Lost Art? Jump or magazine like on the that one first of each sense. month with its own promos, weekend best of three duels, anti-matches with rare hunters, and tournaments twice a year consisting of multiple rounds with special prize cards. This was the second trading card game on the Game Boy Advance after Mega Man Battle Network, and in terms of its feature set, it was one of the better TCG video games of the time, up there with Kodo Battle on the Game Boy Color, Magic the Gathering for the Dreamcast, Bro, and they Digimon Digital so Card Arena. Bad. How do we play these ass the kids, have a dude? You could actually walk around in like Pokemon Smart. Card GB or SNK vs. Capcom, but it so was a more simulation the two driven game that was trying to replicate the I, basic I also played most of, of these, but how did we do that, form. dude? How did and we sit through this? Card wasn't caught up to the real game, this was probably for the best, because the Pokemon was more fun then. to play than what was current. Konami had made the real game worse, and players could use the digital game to dip this back game. into I love those time. games too, but like Despite how? Literally, releasing very <laughs> early in the life of the Game know, Boy man. Advance, and eventually seeing a worldwide release as the eternal like duelist so... soul, Duel Monsters 5 actually indicated a dip in popularity so for Konami. Bad. The game still sold 1.7 million copies and became the 20th best-selling Game Boy Advance game of all time, but this was roughly half of what its predecessors Duel Monsters still 4 and 3 and Forbidden Memories sold, Fair enough. and was built from global sales rather than just Japanese. In Japan, Duel Monsters 5 only moved 410,000 units life to date, about 16% of what Duel Monsters 4 did, and subsequent <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! video games would see a gradual decline in Japan while rising in popularity overseas, before tapering off worldwide around 2004 and becoming just another video game series, rather than a massive omnipresent phenomena. The last Yu-Gi-Oh! game to break 1 million copies sold was Duel Monsters International, known outside Japan as Worldwide Edition Stairway to the Destined Duel. 
Well, it would be some time before the phenomenon was exhausted. Would be kind of strange to have a card named. Yeah, I get that. I get that. that the brand but was not going to dominate forever. It, September I, dropped I, another I, game on I, I players. Still want the them. sequel to Forbidden Memories, Yu-Gi-Oh! Shin Duel Monsters 2: Inherited Memories. This one was an exceptionally weird spin-off that didn't even resemble the real game, with the player moving their monsters around an 8x8 grid like in a strategy RPG, and a story based around the historical War of the Roses. But it made one important Yo, contribution memories. to the OCG, Newt, which was Gemini Elf but better. 1900 attack plus a flip effect that raised its attack and defense by 500 points, and a separate Wait, no, effect that took out any monster that destroyed it in battle by 500 in every stat. Pee -pee -poo -poo. This meant that even if you never <laughs> said it, it would only eight months face up. Back. If it was destroyed by battle, it would still Wait, no, it's the Duelist of the Roses. Instantly yeah, you're right. High-end monsters like Psycho Shocker and the Summoned Demon down to a level where four-star beaters could slay them. People didn't really use Newt for the flip effect because 900 defense wouldn't be enough for it to survive and use the attack buff, and instead summoned it face up right away since the debuff served as an incentive not to attack it. It was undeniably the strongest four-star monster of Series 2, and it wasn't reprinted until it was already irrelevant in 2006. So I'm sure I never had a PlayStation 2, so I never played that one. I was a Nintendo kid, personally. And a raise. That was a joke. Everybody knows Konami pays its employees in store credit. Anyway, I was a Nintendo kid. Not just because Konami was once again printing Nintendo cards kids rise promos, but because they were also kids. power creeping the card they had just done that to, Vorse Raider. When you are a competitive player aiming to win the National or Asia or World Championship, you will pay anything to have the perfect deck. And Konami knew this and said, okay, buy this video game three times. This wasn't an oversight or a mistake, it was just evil. Intentionally bad design, done to squeeze blood from the stones, and Konami <laughs> waited until Inherited Memories was Okay, I'm not trying to start a fight, I'm not trying to start a fight, Newt. but... Before then, if you were playing good stuff, then you <laughs> needed Newt to win the mirror match, or else your Gemini Elves would lose to the opponent's Newt instead. But let's be clear, you weren't really playing good stuff in September 2001, because the next ban list was still four months off. You were playing Exodia or Burn. Compared to the first turn kill decks being allowed to run around unchecked, Newt being a promo was just another nuisance. The seventh core set of Series 2, Struggle of Chaos, launched on the 20th and marked Struggle a major change for the OCG. It was the first set to not adapt any new cards from the anime or manga, instead featuring a wholly original set of cards that tried to convey a line of continuous stories through their illustrations. As a whole, the set focused on three warring monster types. Warriors, Fiends, and Dragons. The Warrior-type cards included Reinforcement of the Army, the Warrior Returning Alive, and Exiled Force. Reinforcement of the Army was a warrior simple one-for-one -one magic card that tutored a level 4 lower warrior to your hand from your deck, which was often used to search different Dimension Warrior or Zombire, and the Warrior Returning Alive added a Warrior-type monster from your graveyard to your hand. It wasn't level restricted, so you could use it with cards like Premature Burial to search anything Reinforcement couldn't touch. Exiled Force was a four-star monster that could be attributed to destroy any monster on the field, and is sometimes said to be the beginning of modern Yu-Gi-Oh decks because of its high searchability, ease of use, and inherent utility. Prior to this, people ran Dream PRO for control, but Exiled Force was live as soon as you drew it, and was easily searched by Critter, Reinforcement of the Army, or Giant Rat. And once it was in the graveyard, it turned all resurrection cards into removal cards. Monster Reborn Would and Premature Burial became three be a bad thing to today. Um... It's it there's a it's it's hard to evaluate searchers um because there is a good reason like on the one hand on the one hand you could say that if it's a problem that you can search any given warrior right then that that warrior is probably the problem right if I can play like six copies of a certain warrior and that's a problem then probably that warrior should not have been made right if, if you if you want to say it that way uh, or you can see it that way. But you can also see it in a way where there's, well, there's a there's some sense in the rules of the game, right? It makes sense that you can only play each copy of a card. Like you can only play three copies of a card, right? So cards like Reinforcement of the Army kind of defeat the purpose of, of that rule, right? You're, you're essentially not playing three copies of a card anymore. You're now able to play six, right? Which is not what's intended by the rules of the game. Um... Whether that's a problem or not is up to up for debate. I don't know. Uh, it, it probably wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, considering how every single like deck has starters at some point. But it does have like it, I I do think it's it's for the better if it doesn't. Like I, I, yeah, I, I I'm not against consistency for the most part, but I I always thought that like in the in the early days of Yu-Gi-Oh, um, a card like Reinforcement of the Army was mainly cool. Because what you would do is you would play three Rhoda, and then you would only play one of each of the warriors so that it would be a toolbox kind of situation where Rhoda would give you a card based on the situation, right? But nowadays, it's not being used like that. Nowadays, searchers are being used in a different fashion because normally you always search the same card, right? You, you search the same card with your searcher every time, uh, and you just use it to have more copies of that one card, right? 
um like terraforming is the perfect example you're not putting if terraforming goes to three you're not starting to use a terraforming toolbox where you play a lot of different field spells you're playing six copies of the best field spell in your deck like six pearl rhinos or whatever you're not doing like different shenanigans right it's just a starter card it's not a it's not a toolbox kind of card which was the intended purpose i think of reinforcement of the army when they made it was no not not that people can now play six copies of a warrior but they can play like a toolbox approach where you play a couple warriors one time and i think that utility was just lost over the course of the game like at some point at some point this utility aspect was uh was lost and and replaced by just like play more copies of one card and um and i think this is where they decided that they should limit or ban some of these searchers and i think that's fair enough all right exiled force like a costless tribute to the doomed as a result exiled force continued to see play all the way into early 2007 in the middle of series five the standout dragon of the set was Death Demon Dragon, a fusion monster that couldn't use any substitutes for its fusion. No goddess with the third eye allowed. Its effect negated all monster flip effects and negated and destroyed any traps that targeted it. While on the surface, only being able to fusion summon it through those specific monsters sounds too restrictive, in reality that requirement didn't apply if it wasn't fusion summoned in the first place. By using Devil Franken to special summon it, you could bypass those limitations Frank. and completely shut down the opponent's flip effects without needing to set royal command. Up to this point, Devil Franken usage was on the decline, but the introduction of a monster that could totally shut down Mill breathed new life into it. What players would do is use Devil Franken for Thousand Eyes Sacrifice normally, then if they discovered they were playing against a Mill deck, summon Death Demon Dragon instead. Since Franken was easily searched through recruiter monsters, Good Stuff now had an effective strategy for counteracting Mill. All they needed was for Card of Safe Return to get hit, and Good Stuff would get the good times back. The big fiend out of Struggle of Chaos was Majin Dark Balter, a fusion of possessed. I only remember these guys from uh, from Gold Format for like Metamorphosis. I've I've never I never played in uh, like Franken. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say Frankenstein. What's it called? Cyberstein. Blood Soul and Frontier Wise Man. Like Death Demon Dragon, Dark Balter did not accept any substitutes for its fusion materials. Its first effect allowed the controller to pay a thousand life points when a normal magic card was activated to negate that effect, and its second effect negated the effects of any monster it destroyed by battle. So Balter could shut down cards like Pot of Greed, Delinquent Duo, and Thunderbolt, and also stop monsters like Newt and Maneater Bug, but it was totally powerless against trap cards, quick play, and equip magic cards like Snatch Steel. Its first effect could only be used twice in most situations because you generally turned to Devil Franken to get it out, and that Snatch Steel vulnerability was especially important because if the opponent snatched control of Balter, then you just paid 5,000 LP to give them one of the strongest monsters in the game. The weakness to traps also meant that a single Ring of Destruction could easily win the duel. Even so, shutting down normal magic and effect monsters was very strong, to the point that the card retained some playability all the way into the 2010s. In its own time, Balter Okay, that's not true. 2010s? Unless the OCG ban list was very different, this card didn't see play after a GOAT. I'm pretty sure. Like, how would you summon this? Even? Like Critter and Killer Tomato, as well as nullifying Different Dimension Warrior. For purely shutting down There's flip no effects, shot. it was inferior to Death Demon Dragon, but it was more versatile and that led to a lot of... 2010 is a OCG. stretch, I think. There were a lot of other decent cards to come out of Struggle of Chaos, like Spear Dragon, Emergency Rations, and Super Rejuvenation, but they didn't see much play because of the format being so Exodia heavy. Exiled Force was probably the most important, as a searchable general Super purpose removal card, dude, and the enhancements the to good stuff meant that if Card of Safe Return were not in the card pool, it probably would have been a conventional beatdown-centric format. Unfortunately, what happened next was really the end of beatdown as a deck. The Dark Ages were about to get a whole lot darker, thanks to the introduction of the worst, most vile, most degenerate monster Yu-Gi-Oh has ever printed, Yadagara- Ah, I was gonna guess something! Ah, goddammit, I was too late! Ah, uh, I was- Wait, that's it? Hey, there's no more parts! Oh my god, just- uh, just drops- just drops that name and leaves, refuses to elaborate? Oh no. Oh, uh, the end, they end on a cliffhanger and there's no further parts? Oh, nah. You were going to guess Chaos Emperor? I don't think I would have guessed Yada. Yeah, I probably would have guessed Chaos Emperor. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest, I probably would have guessed Chaos Emperor, but hey, okay, well. Anyways, uh, that's that. Those were very enjoyable. Once again, I'm going to link you the channel. I thought that was very enjoyable. That was very, very cool stuff. Even though I, I do a lot, like, I do like to talk about current Yu-Gi-Oh! a lot. I also really like um, every once in a while dwelling in the history of the game. I do like that as well. Um, now, we will, turn, we will turn to some Photon Hypernova deck building now. 
actually i almost forgot before we do i do need to give you a word from a sponsor really quick really quick i'm supposed to inform you that sleeve chief are are restocking their their stuff and i'm supposed to show you on stream some stuff that they did send me like these ones for all you for all you booba enjoyers and i also got these ones which is which are among the ones that they've just restocked are these are among the ones that they've restocked um on the sleeve chief website which i'm we're gonna we're gonna look at real quick the new sleeves released right now so you know you got some you got some oh actually the, the both of you both of the ones that i just showed you both of the ones that I just showed you are already sold out, but they have a bunch of other ones. Like the Goddess ones are real nice. The Chaos Ruler ones are real nice. The, the Lord of the Heavenly Prison ones. And all the other good ones that I've shown you in the past um, are, are pretty pog. They do ship everywhere as far as, as, far as I'm aware. Um, and in the extra deck sleeves category, they also have like the... Look at the... I like these gigantic, uh, uh, gigantic sleeves a lot as a sprite enjoyer personally. Also, beat cop. If you want to put a beat cop counter on Mystic Mine in style, stuff like that. Um, they've yeah, they've had this huge restock. They've had this huge restock, and they asked me to to tell you guys about it because the stuff, as you can see, it sells out hella quick. It was still here, like I think this morning. Uh, you can use Josh Five for five percent off! Exclamation mark sleeves if you wanna if you wanna check out what they got, um, and get yourself a little discount. Um, very nice. So there's also going to be some giveaway on my twitter together with sleeve chief i don't know exactly yet what we're giving away i need to i need to talk to them about it but they told me that they were trying to they were doing they they were planning on doing some giveaway together on twitter so if you want to you can go exclamation mark uh socials to follow my twitter as well for a a giveaway together with sleeve chief at some point i don't know exactly um sadly i couldn't get the cory car sleeves maybe i'm gonna give these away I might. I'm, I can talk to Sleeve Chief about it. Maybe I can give these away as well. I don't really. Yeah, I'm. I. I would use them. I would use them. But if people really want them, I could also give them away. But I was. I was kind of thinking about using them for for Leon because I think they're pretty good. Um. But yeah. Uh. Anyways. Um. That's enough of that. Um. Uh, check out the Sleeve Chief re restock and use Josh Five for five percent off. That's all I wanted to get out. And thank you for Sleeve Chief for, of course sponsoring the channel and making it possible for me to stream full time um and that includes that includes all of the sponsors as well uh smart guard and uh, memory pc as well huge shout out for enabling me enabling me to do the full time content creation thing that I've been doing and that you guys appear to to like a lot um so yeah thank you and shouts out Do you know if they allow picking up the order where they are stationed at? They are based in my city. You'd have to ask them for that. I don't know. I haven't encountered that question yet. Is there a good deck box place in Europe like Mana Moon? Uh, the, I mean, Sleeve Chief also has a deck box that's really nice that I also use, that I, but it's not for sale currently. And I'm not, uh, yeah, it's not uh, something I advertise, but it's it is also they have a they have this one, which I personally like a lot. That's the I I just use that one personally. All right, so why don't we get into some deck building theory, shall we? So what I want to, I want to work on, what I want to work on today is I want to get a, I want to get a feeling for what the standard lists are going to be. Is it for sale, that deck box? I think it's sold out. I'm pretty sure it's sold out. No Deck Doctor today? No, the Deck Doctor is going to be on Wednesday. The Deck Doctor is going to be on Wednesday. The only thing I wanted to let you guys know is that the submissions will open on my Discord, uh, like, today. 
where people can send me decks and then I will look at them uh, on the stream on Wednesday. The way we're going to do it is I'm going to open submissions for uh, subs first. Like tonight, I'm going to open submissions for subscribers. I'm going to see how many submissions I get. And if I can handle more than those in a single stream, I'm also going to open submissions for everyone else and, and see how many, how many we can get. But um, either way, the place to be for that is Discord, and we're going to do that on Wednesday. The reason we're doing this on Wednesday is because I specifically think I want to look into the format a little bit more before I give you guys feedback, right? Because what's the point? What's the point of, of giving you guys feedback when I'm not into the format enough yet? So, yeah. The Deck Doctor is definitely for post-Photon Hypernova. And please, please, I mean, only post-Photon Hypernova, right? This is supposed to be... I'm supposed to be looking at your guys' deck that you're planning to bring to, like, regionals or even YCSs after Photon Hypernova. And I'm going to give you guys some feedback on what I think about ratios and such. There was also a grim YGO post-Photon Hypern tour tournament, which could be interesting to look at, lists and maybe even some games. Uh, I saw that someone posted on my Discord this morning, but I... I didn't want to look at like replays today, but if there's a if there's like a a place where you can find the uh, the deck lists in a in a good fashion, then I'm down to look at some decks from that tournament. How can I stop feeling bad due to playing three rivalry, three skill drain, and three gozen in labyrinth? Uh, if you genuinely think that's the best way to play the deck, then there's nothing wrong with that. The cards are legal. The cards are legal. If that's what you think is the best approach to make the deck good, then uh, go for it. Like genuinely, I don't think that's. I don't think you should. Um, you should worry about it. So I have this morning. I already have a list kind of a list for Gishki Sprite. I also I already have kind of a list for Tierlament. Uh which is just this currently. I don't know if this is gonna this is what it stays like, but this is okay I think. Uh for Kash Tira I have like I went through this yesterday and I do think that this is kinda like the standard thingy. Grim YGO's newest video has the deck list for the tournament. Alright let me let me search that one up. Grim YGO top eight deck lists and breakdown. Okay, that sounds interesting. Let's do some research. Hi, it's Andrew with Grim YGO, and today we are going over the Grim GCS tournament that just took place. And we had 86 players in the event. And for the now 40 breakdown, we have 42 tier Ellen decks. Nova Ruma, thank you for the tier one. Appreciate you. Welcome to the channel. Glad you're enjoying the content enough to subscribe. Appreciate them. Uh, I believe one or two did play a cash tier hybrid where they either side into more cash tier cards. Okay, they had. What is that? Uh, like 80 people? 17. Almost 90 people. 86 in the main says deck, down there. Uh, is a supplementary engine uh, to basically do some cool plays with the uh, tier element, uh, cash tier. 42 tier element, 22, 22 cash tier, tier 9 sprite, exactly 8 brand, and 5 other. See, element decks now, and, uh, I, I, think, I think you guys should be careful with evaluating this because this is, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, I mean, obviously, this was an online tournament. This was an online tournament, which means that the price point was not a factor in picking tier limit, right? Like, yeah, maybe people played Kashira in this event and performed decently with it. That does not mean that they would also do that if they had to spend the money for Kashira. Just throwing that out there. Uh, Tsar OTG, thank you for the Prime. Appreciate you. Thank you for supporting the channel. Uh, we have nine Sprite, uh, eight Branded Bistial, and five other... People and, trying uh, the new deck and most like, most importantly, like, for free because it was online. So um, absolutely yeah, take that with a grain of salt. Um, that that deck is, representation. Rise of Sprite, the Bistial deck, which is, uh, pretty now, I do think the deck will be represented at YCS second, Lyon uh, and also YCS, other, other, uh, what is it, wonder. Mexico? Uh, one was a, but uh, um, Kinko, not to this extent, I think. It's my personal call. But let's jump into the top eight breakdown. There was a top eight breakdown. We have three cash tier, which was pretty cool to see. I was hoping the breakdown did not show... Now, that is interesting, though. That is interesting, though, because what it means is that we had a 
we had a very high representation of tier limit, but the conversion rate into top eight wasn't that great. And Kashtira's conversion rate was good. Now, for the conversion rate, it doesn't matter what the reason was why they played the deck, right? The conversion rate doesn't change anything about the fact, like, it doesn't change anything about the fact that the, they, they played the deck and it did well with it. Uh, mostly tier element, and it didn't. And we started seeing some shifts here uh, with the format. and Also, also like, Sprite. Hold up. How many Sprites were there? Nine sprites and two of them made top eight. That's More, also uh, very good. Power crap cards to go against the tier deck, especially like the shifters. It the, matters who uh, plays it. I mean, great. absolutely, absolutely, right? It's. Uh, I'm not saying like, oh, the conversion rate was insane. This is now the best deck. No, that's not what I'm saying. It's just like, it still is something to that that caught my eye, right? The conversion rate of Sprite and Kashira is more than I expected. and also some other cards that the Kashira deck is able to play and uh, its countermeasures. But yeah, three Kashira, two tier elements. And uh, two sprite in one of the uh, li li liberal mancer uh, mechanical decks, and uh, yeah, pretty crazy. See here, uh, I did play lots of uh, going second cards in the deck, like lava golems, sphere modes, and econs. Uh, both sprite decks did play a lot. Stop of copium. I'm not coping. Tier limit is still the best deck. I'm just saying the time, other but, um, two might two still be like not either two to three completely of the dead. new cashier tier element since it's in interaction on the opponent's turn as well. I don't think that's uh, copium cool to say to that. See, uh, but let's jump onto the deck lists. So for top eight here, we have Cole Mackey who played a 40 card uh, Libro uh, Mechanco deck, and I thought this card definitely took people by storm. Uh, basically, the top three decks uh, prepared very well for each other. But I think we're deck list. Okay, so the idea I'm getting here. <clears throat> Joshua now has perfect information. <laughs> Six months of perfect information. Six months of Sprite. No coincidence. Absolutely no coincidence. Thank you, Zach, for the six months. Welcome back. Appreciate you. Uh, so the concept of this deck is... Not too bad. I'm going to tell you what I don't like about it, though. So the concept is you go first and just have... Like, wait. You, if you go second, you are you're just tribute your opponent's shit with Lava Golem or Sphere Mode and then just combo off. If you go first, you combo off anyways. My problem with this deck is, first of all, I don't understand the enemy controllers. I am a little bit, like, confused about enemy in this particular deck. Does someone have the... Can someone explain the enemy controller to me? Tribute the Viner. What does the Viner do when it's tributed? Doesn't it summon a small fairy? Diviner of the Herald. When it's tributed, special summon a level 2 or lower fairy from hand or deck. But that can't summon any of this. Sheridan plays? Hold up. Sheridan. Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, two level 6 monsters. Once per turn, detach. Oh, because you take and then it's level six. Okay. I'm not sure if I like that enough, but sure. It's like this. Uh, it's very hard to prepare for it. Uh, it's right actually playing Bissell cards and cards to outcast Tira. And basically, uh, good cards against the tier deck. And then tier was countering cards for uh, tier and the uh, cast tier deck. So basically, like, the top three is just try to balance each other out, and this deck kind of was able to make it just because, like, um, some people probably don't understand the cards. They didn't really uh, look at them. And uh, Dodge yeah. effect negations, tribute, excess, diviner, or tribute, not... I mean, I get it. I understand the card, but I just, like, don't feel like that's the best card for this slot in this metagame. Like, if you wanted, like, one more card that's, like, solid going second into most things, like, why is it enemy controller? Why is it not, like, Book of Eclipse, for example? Just throwing names out there now basically and this is something we're looking to too there's going to be a more in-depth deck profile coming up on the channel uh from cole mackie and possibly a combo guide as well so be on the lookout for that uh for but the general concept is basically you go second you have like very strong board breakers um you have very strong board breakers uh alongside a small a, a solid combo engine my problem with this is that um my problem with this is that when you go first the I think this deck dies to freaking Havness and Tier Limits Kash Tira a lot. Because you start comboing and they just interrupt you very efficiently. But and going second going second, this is fine, I think. If you draw if you draw a sphere mode or lava golem going second, I think you're good. Joshua now has perfect in this list. Seven months already. Let's go, Joshi Gopagarly. <laughs> Yo, thank you, Omni. Thank you for the seven months. Appreciate you. Uh also it only plays two of each Libro, so like 
you have so little starter cards. You have three teleport, two liberal, the four of the liberals, two of the field spell, which the field spell isn't ideal. So very this feels inconsistent. For starters, we got one Nini, one Hooray, uh, two of the uh, Ohime, how we pronounce that, Kaguro. Then we it's got oh the homie. ceremony, uh, the reflection, the it's water, oh homie. Uh, the fire. Then we got double Geek Boy here. And then two of the Liberal Mancer Fire, one of the Agent, one of the Doom Broker. Then we got uh, First Appearance, two of those, uh, one of the Intervention. It feels uh, Divine, very bricky uh, one to ben me. 10, one Gear Free, three e three Prep, uh, one Renat. He did talk about playing a second one, uh, just because he's not playing like the Gear Free Link or the Flame Swordsman Link that's able to summon uh, Renat from hand. But if you play two, if you draw one, it's an extender. But if you play two, then the Isolde combo will always be live unless you draw both, which is very unlikely. Uh, we got the uh, Souls, so the Double Illusion. Okay, we don't need the card by card. Crush we can see the deck on the screen. It's just pretty cool. And then you can activate card. Uh, 3D barriers play more of the uh, issues of cards, um, but or actually it's almost close. Now I want to figure out. I want to figure out um, what the standard tier limit decks like basically gonna look like. And this is Ryan Yu, so good player here in top eight with Ishizu tier post photon hypernova. Um, worth things worth noting here: two Mudoras only, two Agidos, uh, three tier limits Kashira, no Fenrir. And no Kashtira field spell. And we're playing the thrusting together with the meta noise, and we're putting two talents. Also, small bestial package. Overall, overall, in my opinion, mostly reasonable choices. Uh, there's nothing wrong with going a smaller bestial package now that thrust thrusting is a thing. Once again, I've said this before, I kind of understand this. I kind of understand this approach where bestials become worse into thrusting in the format because you just get punished by thrusting. But there is a few bestials where I feel like it's worth taking the risk. Like, specifically Magnamute, in my opinion, is such a good card. It's just such a good card that maybe risking your opponent having the card isn't the end of the world if you have Magnamut. Like, Magnamut is so good. Right? And so I think, um, I think that's fine to play three Magnamut and then just one other. The one other in this case is Baldrake, which I can get behind that. Same ratio is most, but uh, three Keldo, double Madura, uh, three Kelbeck, and the double Agito. And we got double Rhino Heart, three Merli, three Hob. The double Agito I can only imagine being in the deck now because you have now you not only have three Havnis to mill on your opponent's turn, you also have this thing. So with six of these, you might want to consider playing more of these. So to make sure you hit them, essentially. And then three of the Tier on the Kestira. It's also good interaction for opponent's turn, so it's like having multiple Havnis, except you do have to banish cards. With so many Ishizus, don't we also play the hand? I think with, with 10 Ishizus, I'd be inclined to play the Orange Light. Yeah, I agree with you. And then we have uh, three of the Magnet and one of the Baldrake, which is a new card from Photon. Thrusting is staple. Uh, thrusting, I think, is mainly good in the mirror match. Like, if you, if you want to make your deck, like, better in other matchups, you might want to consider taking out Thrusting. It's also depending on how many people play Bistials. If, if people don't play as many Bistials, then you might not want to use Thrusting. It still works against Havnus and the Tier Limit thing, though. Hypernova, we got double screen here. Uh, three Palerino, one Terra. We got three of the Tasking here for uh, Thrusting. And double tactics, the Institution. Then we got double Soliac in the one Meta Noise here. Uh, pretty clean list, I would say. And then we have extra deck. We got Elspring Dark, uh, Dweller, Babushka, uh, Beatrice. And then we got double Zeus here. The Nibiru is interesting. The Nibiru is interesting because I feel like I feel like you wouldn't want to side this in the mirror match with only four Bestials. Because, yeah, it, it seems odd. But maybe it's okay. I don't know. Then we have Eclipse, we have back row removal. Very little, uh, very little side deck for uh, Kashtira, I feel like. We have Eclipse, we have Dark Ruler, those are fine. But that's it. I mean, we have Nibiru. Ah, uh, maybe it's enough. I decided not to play the Redoer, and um, basically I noticed a lot in the tournament that basically, uh, if you played a secondary Zeus, it made the Kashtira matchup completely more easy. And like, uh, most times they, they don't even rip the secondary Zeus, but they see you play two, they always go for something else, uh, which is pretty funny. But uh, yeah, playing double Zeus, I say it's pretty good against the uh, Kashtira deck. And I got double kit, one Rolk. Uh, one of the Clyde Heart, Mud, Gura, and the Dragos Pelia. And then uh, side deck, double of the... And uh, let's jump in the list here. We got Triple Pot, Triple Thrusting. Uh... Okay, so... Three Pot... Okay, hold on. So I decided to... In my list, basically, I said, okay, I believe that these 27 cards should be, in, should be expected in every single 
These, these 27 cards should be in every single Kash Tira list, in my opinion. And then it's a question of what do you fill up the remaining 13 slots. And here, do we have all these 27 cards? I think we do. Prosp is there. Shifter is there. 3-3-3. Three, three, three. There's, there's even more of these. Oh, there's only two birth. There's only two birth, but the rest is in there. Yeah. So maybe birth is not a staple three of them. Eh, maybe, maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. Maybe I was wrong considering that one is staple three of them. Uh, I guess I, I have seen people play two rise hard as well. Although I do think that's, that's probably incorrect. So I guess, okay, these 26 I would consider standard for Kashtira. And then you have like tech choices. Uh, two tactics, three imperm, uh, three shifter. Then we got uh, three friend, friend mirror, uh, three unicorn, uh, three the rise heart, uh, double scare claw cash tira, and then we got the one tier elements cash tira. Uh, one of the ghost mourner, uh, then we got double birth. Uh, three Worth noting here, the most important info I take away from this one is that this one does not play Ibli. Copy. Which is like, or double Ibli tier. or adventure, so you're just losing to Nib essentially. Uh, three only, three judgment, three what tier player probably not cash tier deck and for this list let's jump into we got 40 cards uh, three ash one barrier uh, three oh my god barrier statue stop uh, three Fenrir, uh, double rise heart, uh, three unicorn. why one mourner i have no idea one, i really don't three know I, like mourner is not a bad card mourner is not a bad card but i don't know why you would play one econs and then we got uh, three birth three poppies three pot three probably Pistons, space Sarah, issues uh, and one big bang this list is actually pretty clean on ratios uh, maxing on cards um extra deck we have the Barone, okay so the, this uh, one like, doesn't play uh ibli either but this one plays enemy controller this one plays enemy controller, which once again, I don't really... I guess it's good in the mirror match, but how good is this against tier limits? Because, like, you summon a tier... Let's say you summon Fenrir or Unicorn, activate effect, they go Saliac, you go chain enemy, but then you have a useless monster on the board. I don't know. All right, it helps against the couple... It helps against the tier limit back row. Well, couldn't you just play, like, Cosmic? double big guy. One mind hacker, one of the Arsenal Falcon for the barrier combo. Then we got Red Eyes, Flare Metal Dragon, and Double Donner for utility cards here, which is pretty neat. Definitely like people utilizing this card. This is the third list we've seen it uh, so far. And then we got a Double Ball Drake. Uh, oh, can we turn, finally ban Barrier and, Statue, and, uh, three please? Then we got uh, three of the engraving and three evenly match. And the weird thing here is the Bestials. I don't think he plays any sixes, but uh, I mean, being able to do this and then I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence with the Bestials. I get they're good. Hold up, I need to go to the toilet real quick. It is urgent. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, chair, chair stream over. Chair stream over. Pop. But playing cards like Prosperity, you can dig for like blowout cards against this matchup. But uh, let's move on. Next, we have uh, top four, which we got Florian Drew. She played a uh, 40 card sprite list. Let's jump into it. Uh, we got three blue, three jet, three starter, one smasher. Then we got three beaver. 
Okay, so Sprite. Sprite literally does not change. <laughs> Sprite is just, yep, same deck as before. You just have a better Bistial now. You have a better Bistial now. You have uh, Thrusting, which is a good card. Uh, although, I don't know how I feel about Thrusting. Like, going first, you can only get Imperm. Uh, just, eh. Wind Up Kitten. Wind Up Kitten is interesting. Ash is also very interesting. See, this is the problem. This is the problem I have with this deck right now, with Sprite, is... How do you make this deck good into all the decks that there are? Because this list doesn't feel good enough into Flunder, for example. Like, literally, I'm looking at this list and I'm like, how the hell do you plan on beating Flunder? Because there's, like, a lot of cards that you need to side out against Flunder, and your side deck does not really have sufficient cards against Flunder. It's kind of wow. I will simply draw Ash and Imperm versus Flu. Okay. Fair enough, then. I don't know. I, I It feels weird. Also, the Doop Frog seems kind of off. The Wind Up Kitten seems off. But okay. I mean, it's good to see. It's good to see that even on a smaller scale, even even if it is a smaller scale, that Sprite isn't like completely hopeless. But I, I think Sprite just is in this weird spot where you have to counter uh like because this deck isn't even good into Ishizu tier particularly, right? Because if I wanted to play seven Bistials and a little and a couple other hand traps, I could just play Ishizu tier myself. Right? I can simply play I can just play Ishizu tier myself. There's no problem. Like I can play seven Bistials, three Havnis, three Tierlements, Kash Tira. Uh, that's the same amount of hand traps. I can do that. No one is nothing stopping me from doing that. Uh, two angler, uh, triple swap, one red, one carrot. Then we got the dupe frog and the wind up kitten. Have not seen sprite in a while. Uh, pretty cool to see. Uh, three of the. If if any if, if any of you want to play sprite, we can build a sprite list right now. That I would if I was gonna play pure sprite, roughly what I would play, what I would test for YCS Leon. We can do that. The thrusting one tactics. Uh, three imperm. Then we got uh, one rebellion, uh, triple magnet, uh, two druze worm, and two of the Baldrake, and then three ash blossom. Uh, extra deck here we got double gigantic, a mannequin cat, uh, toad. Uh, Dijon Buster, the Soul Sweeper, the Ninja Shadow Mosquito. And then we got Wallow, uh, Double Zeus here, which we're seeing a lot of. Uh, double Elf, the Sprint, Dark, and the uh, Codebreaker for the Boost Out. Side deck, we have a Red Resonator, three Lancia, uh, Double Eclipse, Double Evening, Double Nib. And then we got uh, one of the Abyssal Baldrake, the Druze Worm. And then we got Chaos Hunter and the Testudo, uh, which I believe does a combo with the Swap and the uh, Double Cross. And uh, let's move on to the next one. you think list. Brave Sprite right, so might be viable? Else, I don't think four, so. Playing no. Sprite, Bistial, uh, which is pretty cool to see that most of this uh, top cut is not uh, represented by tier. And there's tons of other decks countering things in the format, uh, which might make this format more fun, but it's also more degenerate. I will be at YCS. Uh, uh, I will be there. We got three Fact Valor, three Nibiru, this card's insane right now. Double Angler, uh, three Beaver, uh, three Blue, one Carrot, three Jet, one Red, uh, Triple Swap, three Pot, uh, one Smasher, three Starter, three Imperm, and the one Double Cross here. And uh, Side, our uh, Extra Deck will be first. We got Double Zeus, the Downard, uh, Double Gigantic, the one uh, Shadow Mosquito, uh, Dijon Buster, and Soul Sweeper, and Toad. Uh, Wallow, the Codebreaker, Dark, Double Elf, and the Sprint. I think the one thing we're noticing more through these decks is people playing Double Zeus. And I think that's one reason why the decks, or it's one of the reasons why this deck is uh, doing so good post in the format for these uh, multiple other decks is because basically Kestria has no like, really good interactions for uh, adding Zeus because everything activates in a new Another so sprite list. Different... Okay, this one has seven Bestials, three a Veiler, three. Okay, there's no way. Wait, is there a way? No, I've decided. There's no way. There's no way Veiler is better than Ash. I said it. I said it. There's no way. It's not true. It ain't true. There's no shot. Routes to be able to make Zeus. You're pretty much gonna win that game, uh, which is really nice. And then uh, side deck, I've got three shifter, three gamble, one driver, uh, three eclipse, three of the gravekeeper engraving. Um, yep, crazy card. Uh, Valor makes nip resolve against, against tier, against tier, against tier, yes. Here, against uh, tier, yes. But against all the other decks, Valor is worse. Like Valor loses if they shifter. It's if. If Valor didn't have to go to the graveyard, it'd be okay. But the fact that Valor literally gets countered in like a third of the games automatically is just not good right now. Three cards, we got three Unicorn, three Frenier. Uh, triple Rise Heart, which also is complimentary with the uh, Birth. And then we got uh, one of the Scareclaw Kashtira, uh, three of the Planet, three Popius, three Birth, one Terra, one Sat, one Necro Valley. Then we got three Pot, double Eclipse, uh, triple Lava Golem, triple uh, Shifter, triple Ash, triple Imperm, and the one Big Bang. Uh, extra deck here, we got double Rise Heart, two Shangri-La, one Mind Hacker, double Zeus. Oh, we got the Necro the Valley with the uh, Terraforming. Uh, uh, Spice, I like it. Uh, double Lingrebo, the Donner, Dagger Fur Hire, utility. Another thing we keep seeing these cards up, take notes on it, and then we got the Almirage here. Uh, the Lava Golem, Golem want, main deck uh, tech, all right. If you're going to do it, you do Almirage, where if you're doing it, Lingrebo. I was wondering this, I was wondering this, um, because for Fluanderies, for Fluanderies, it's basically been standard to, uh, it's been standard to play 
cards in the main deck that are only good going second, right? Like Dark Ruler, for example. Uh, that's been completely standard for Flunder simply because Flunder is considered to be so strong going first already. So they would just pack cards into their deck that's, that are just like good going second. Uh, so I, I feel like Kashtira is kind of in a similar spot. So I'm not surprised to see the Lava Golem here. To be honest. Uh, Sidek, triple Ibli, this card is crazy. Uh, three Solemn Judgment, three Ibli, uh, one Eclipse, uh, one Book of Moon, one Zombie, World. Why uh, Ibli in this deck? Uh, okay, so... Ibli is in this deck for multiple reasons. The, the first reason is that this deck does not need its normal summon. This deck does not need its normal summon in like 90% of its combos. In like some combos you do. Some combos you do normal summon, but in, in for the most part you don't need to. Like you sometimes use your free normal summon off of Kashira Birth, right? But like for the most part, you don't need it. And on top of that, Ibli is a strong floodgate, and your deck loses to Nibiru, which you can play around by giving them Ibli first, right? Uh Ibli turns off a lot of good stuff. Like it turns off um Imperm. It turns off uh, evenly matched. They can crash Ibli, but you're going to have a Lingaribo to negate evenly matched. So, like, it stops that. Uh, and it also just is a floodgate, right? It stops Havness. It stops whatever on your turn, right? So, what you do is you simply go special summon your first big Kashtira, right? Normal summon Ibli, link off Ibli into Lingaribo, and give your opponent the Ibli. Uh, and then you're safe from all those things, right? You're safe from all those hand traps, all those interactions. You can't be, you can't be Kuri Karad. You can't even be Lava Golem if that's a thing, right? You can't do any of that. And then Shifter on Resolution. Well, okay, yeah, then you don't need Ibli, but fair enough. Anyways, um, yeah, that's why Ibli is in this deck, basically. If you know you go first then you know that Nibiru is going to be a problem for you, so you can side Ibli. And this is also the weird spot. This is the weird spot that everyone is in with Nibiru right now, because technically, if it wasn't for Ibli, I'm pretty sure Nibiru is just hands down the best card against Kashtira. Like, if your opponent doesn't have Ibli, Nibiru just kills them. It's very good. The problem is, some of them play Ibli. And they're, some, they're just going to draw it. And then your Nibiru is completely dead. Like, it doesn't do anything. So it's like kind of this high-risk, high-reward kind of thing where uh, if you do play Nibiru, uh, you might just be caught completely dead with it, which I'm not sure if I want to risk that. Of course, it sounds really juicy to just, like, Nibiru them and win the game, but I don't know. Sphere mode with Lava Golem with Ibli in mind? Well, I mean, with that in mind, maybe you could play Lava Golem. Uh, maybe you could play Sphere mode instead. But... Well, yeah, some people play some people play Griffin, but in that in that moment, I don't think Nibiru is that big of a problem. Like, if you use Nib to bait the Griffin, that's at least not that the card at least has a purpose, right? It's not like completely pointless. Whereas if if they have Ibli, it's actually just dead, right? It doesn't do shit. It doesn't do anything. But if they have Griffin. I'm like, oh great, well I'll nib, you have to negate, at least the at least the griffin is gone, and I don't have to deal with that. I can use like my my talents or whatever, and you can't negate it. That's that's at least something. But with Ibli, it just doesn't do anything. Like if it was only if it was only for adventure, I'd still be down to play Nibiru. But for like Ibli is a problem. Yes. Now for the champ himself, we have uh, Pierre Serratino, uh, who got first place with the uh, Ishizu tier deck, uh, 43 cards. Alright, we got 12 Ishizu cards. Get it twisted. We've got uh, three Rhinos, which I feel like is not standard anymore. We've got only two of the new tier element. We've got only one Scream. We've got Super Poly in the main deck. Okay. Uh, and we've got three Imperms. We've got Talents. We've got no Bestials at all. We've got no Bestials at all, which I think is... On the one hand, Monka, right? You would love to play Bestials in that format, but on the other hand, you know, you gotta, you just gotta respect triple tactic thrusting, which is not in this deck either, which is also interesting. Actually, repping Reaper in the side too. I mean, Reaper is now that no one is playing. Wait, well, which one was the one that adds a banished monster from? Thing that, is that crime? 
Is crime the one that's like, I don't know if people, if people are still on crime, if people are still on crime, then I'm not so happy with, with Reaper because the problem is imagine the following situation. Your opponent goes for a tier limit effect in the graveyard and you Reaper Kid Kalos. You Reaper Kid Kalos. So what they're going to make instead is probably a Garura. They're going to make a Garura, and then all it takes is one Bestial, and they can just make Beatrice, detach Garura, send Crime, add back Kid Kalos to the extra deck, and draw a card of Garura. So I don't know... I don't know how good that is to, to Reaper the, uh, the Kid Kalos in the mirror match. If they have no Bestials to go into Beatrice, then I think it's fine. Because then it's not that easy to get the crime into the graveyard. If you Reaper Shangri Era, how does Cash play? Cash unfortunately has uh, multiple ways to play after Reaper. Uh, the the card is not good against Cash Tira because they just randomly recycle with uh, they are the the emergency teleport spell. If it gets banished, I think returns a banished Cash Tira card to hand, so you can just add the banished uh, Xyz back to hand to extra deck. There's no, unfortunately, there's no way to, uh, there's no way to really use Reaper against Kash Tira, which is why, uh, which is why there's no target for it in this deck. This is, the, the Reaper here is only for the mirror match, and only for that. Maybe against Sprite. Maybe against Sprite you would put it in just to get rid of Elf, so they can't make Toad. That's probably good, but, yeah. So let's jump into the list here, and we do see some cool utility cards first. We got Imperm, two Super Polyfree Tactics. Uh, for these users here, we got three Kalbeck, three Gido, uh, three Kaldo, three Mazura, uh, three Hobnes. Uh, but those are not no names here, uh, the list that we're uh, seeing. Siren, There's like, Siren, there was like uh, Ryan Yu, uh, Enzo Fialos, now Pierre Sorrentino. Like, those are names I've heard before. For the finals, I basically Beatrice uh, dumped and somehow went into a Raging Nil 10. On top of already making his own Nil 10. On top of a big board with Grime and a Metanoids, and the opponent just had to uh, scoop it up right then and there, which was uh, pretty wild to see, just going hard on the opponent's deck. But um, extra deck, we got Gorilla Mud, Trispelia, the Collider Heart, uh, Roll, the Double Kit. Again, we're seeing this. The, uh, Can you build Sprite for only? on just to see how we can think about it for a bit yeah we can think about it a bit the thing about these the thing about these ishizu tier decks i'm gonna be 100 percent honest here there's a lot of freaking good cards you can put into an ishizu tier deck and i personally don't believe as of now that any of these approaches are necessarily like wrong or 100 percent better than the other like whether you want to main deck super poly or bestials or imperm or tasking or tactics or what or 10 ishizus or 12 ishizus deck building which is i guess good news for some people deck building has never i don't remember a time in Yu-Gi-Oh where deck building was not was was as irrelevant as now like literally take any of these lists and just practice it that's the bigger deal the bigger deal is practicing with uh with these decks. Practicing with Ishizu tier is more important than uh, finding the perfect ratio of Ishizu cards, right? Whether I, I play 10, 11, or 12, or 9, is like, it, it doesn't matter. Like, okay, you don't, you don't have thrusting, you don't have the money for thrusting, it's fine, bro. You don't have to play that card. Your deck can still perform without it. Uh, yeah, because like, Thrusting counters bestials, but as you can see, a lot of people are not even playing uh, bestials anymore. It's like, and this is why I also am not, I'm not super worried about YCS Lyon in terms of finding or building a perfect deck. I'm just going to apply solid deck building theory to an Ishizu tier deck and it's going to be fine at the end of the day. Uh, it's like, I, I just, um, it's more about playing it correctly, right? It's more about practice, practicing the mirror match. And, uh, or if you want to, if you want to invest time in testing, then test Rogue. Maybe you'll find something cool. And then if you don't find anything cool, then just go back to tier and play standard list. Just, just play it well. I don't know. It's, it's like, uh, yeah, deck building is like not even close to, to as important as it usually is in this format. Technical play still overtakes deck building this format. By far, by far. Technical play is very important. It's a good format. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> this 
This is pretty much it. Which is fine. Like, it's not that bad. It's not that big of a deal. I personally am actually... Uh, I'm actually not too, too worried about it or too mad about it. Of course, I am looking forward to the format to change. Uh, at some point. But for now, it is good to know that... Uh, like, going to YCS Lyon, there's not that much you can do wrong either. That's the, that's the good thing about all this, right? That's the advantage, is like... Even if you don't have enough time to to build the perfect list or whatever, at the end of the day, you, it's not going to be the biggest problem for you. So does this mean Josh will not make a cart spike to unreasonable heights this YCS? I don't know. Probably not. I'm about to put Nimble Sunfish in Ishizu tier and make all you guys pay like 40 bucks each, maybe. I don't know. Depends how nicely you treat me. I don't, I'm, all I'm saying is be nice or I'm putting Nimble Sunfish up in this thing. Or right, anyways. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> I can show you real quick. I can think about what I would build a sprite deck like. Now, I would probably play Bestial Sprite. Shocker. I would probably play Bestial Sprite, but with, like, only good Bestials now. I'd probably do this. I still love Lubelion in Sprite. I think it's great. Uh, Nimble. I think the times where you can meme OTK people with Nimble Sunfish are over, so I probably wouldn't do that. Uh, and this is the baseline of the deck. <laughs> there you go. How to build a sprite deck. Now we have 38 cards. And we have to, we have, we have to put 8 cards in here. We have, we have to put 8 cards in here. That are good against the meta. Now we could play even more bestials. We could play Saronir too. What if you play versus Cash Tira? Look, hey, we don't talk about it. That's the problem. I told you... Sprite can't do it. Now, is there, like, a card that we could play in the main deck? Like, we could play Book of Eclipse, couldn't we? Bysteel deck. <laughs> Bysteel. Yo, it said Bysteel even though you didn't put an E. I take that personal. I take that personal from the TTS. It called it Bysteel. It called it Bysteel. Oh, no. Nah. Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> Thank you, Pag. Oh, you didn't. So with Book of Eclipse, we could technically beat uh, Kash Tira. Can we? A big issue with Sprite is you have to play three Elf, three Gigantic, two Sprint to play around Hacker ripping, ripping them. Oh, that might be a problem. Or, or... Or we just um, lose game one to Kosh Tira if they go first. What if we did that? What if we just say, screw it, they can't afford it. It's hella expensive. We play anti-flunder. What if we did that? <laughs> hey, Olampi, thank you for the raid. Appreciate you. Welcome, everybody. Chat wanted me to build a sprite deck for Leon. Can't you play Nib and just Bestial Ibli? So what you're saying... Okay, hold on. Let me just get this straight. I, you, what you're saying is... What you're saying is we... we uh, we keep the bestials in against Karshira, because that's like advanced technology. There's no way we can't do that. 
<laughs> there's no way we can do that. There's no way we can build a side deck with three Nibirus and just keep the Bistials in against uh, Kash Tira. Don't say let him cook. No. <laughs> there's no shot. We, we can't cook that up. I don't like the recipe from the get-go. I don't like that recipe. I don't want to eat it. I don't want to eat it. No, I don't want to eat it. <laughs> Now, options. These are options. We could play more hand traps, although I'm not sure that's the... Well, it might be. Imperm. I'm not a, I was not a huge fan of Imperm with so many bestials, but we could also play more bestials. The problem is if we play only bestials, we're just going to get bopped by uh, tasking. They won't draw it. They can't afford it. <laughs> the reason I don't like tasking, I think, in Sprite in the main deck. Or maybe I do like it. The problem is this deck doesn't have a card like Instant Fusion. This card does not have a card like Instant Fusion where... If I play tasking, my only target for it is talents. So why am I not just playing three talents? Why, why am I playing? Why am I going the extra step with tasking? I don't, I don't get it. I don't feel like we should do that. I really don't think so. I really don't think that's the, that's the call. Can't you? We could play Prosp. Absolutely. We could play Prosp. The, the, the problem with Prosperity... Uh, well, there's no real problem. But the one thing I don't like about Prosperity as much... Joshua now has perfect uh, information. Hi again for signing my toad at Kaiser Slauten. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you for the five months. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Believe it or not, your support is worth more than a, than a signature on a toad. So I think I thank you. Uh, I don't think prosperity is great because in hand trap decks, in hand trap decks, I've experienced that like with with prosperity. Of course, going first it's great for consistency, but going second you are not as likely to find, like, a banger card, right? That was the cool thing about Power Spell Sprite. Power Spell Sprite, dude, you activate Prosperity, you always find that banger, right? There's always that Dark Ruler, that Tactics, that Enemy Controller, that Mystic Mind. Like, in that deck, it was insane, right? That Light Stage, there was, like, so many good cards that you could find going second. But going first, uh, going second, it's like, here, what are you What are you trying to find? A Book of Eclipse, that's it. If you don't find Book of Eclipse, your card basically does nothing to a board. Going to first paper tournament after learning Yu-Gi-Oh! on Master Duel. You think Sword Soul is good enough deck to compete with? Uh, if it's just like a locals or regionals, I think you're going to be fine with Sword Soul. Yes, it's not going to be the best deck. Be aware of that. But I do think it's not like a big deal to go to a tournament with the Sword Soul right now. You can absolutely do that. It's not bad. Uh, I'm probably going to say we should put Ash Blossom in this deck. I'm probably going to be an advocate for Ash Blossom. I liked Ash Blossom overall when I played it. Mm. Maybe we take out main deck Nib 2. I mean, okay, if you if you expect mainly if you tell me right now we're gonna be mainly facing Kash Chira and Tierlament, I'm down with playing big bestial package and Nibiru. If you wanna ignore Flunder, basically. The problem is that if we ignore Flunder like this, if we disrespect Flunder like this, Blue plays into Nib 2. Okay, now you're memeing again. If we're if we're disrespecting Flunder like this, our side deck needs to be super focused on Flunder, and uh, I think I don't think we can do that in this format. I don't think we can do that in this format. 
Because, I don't know, we need extra help. Ah. Uh, oh, not so sure about this one. Like, if, if, <laughs> if Kash Tira was a budget deck, I'd be like, all right, run it. Like, take out a Lubelion, make it 40, run it. I'm, I'd be down. Like, if, they, if, if Kash Tira was a budget deck, let's go. Like, we can do this. We can run this. It's fine. It works. But since it's not, since ain't nobody going to have the money for, uh, for Kash Tira, I don't know. Why have such a split of cards that are only good versus cash or tier instead of maining cards that are okay into both and siding the blowouts into either? Uh, well, what you say sounds good. What you say sounds, good, sounds very good, but it's not that easy in Sprite. Because if you go too balanced with your, with your anti-meta cards here, then I don't think you're going to win consistent enough. Right? You, you can't find enough cards that are good enough. Like, an impermanence is not the same quality as a bestial against tier limit. Not even close. And you can still lose to Kash Tira even if you draw, like, impermanent Ash. Like, that, those cards are not that efficient against the matchup. Basically, the only way you could do that... The only way you could do that would be if you found a way to just play Power Spell Sprite. Right? If you, if you said, alright, I'm gonna play no hand traps... Like, and literally, I mean zero hand traps. And you just play, like, Book of Eclipse, Prosperity, Tasking, whatever. The problem is, I don't know if there's enough to consist consistently break through the top tier decks, right? And also, your deck is going to be hella weak going first. Any argument for going second sprite with Thrust for Eclipse and Evenly? Thrust cannot get Eclipse. Thrust only gets normal spells. Is Droll just dead because Shifter? Feels like it hits Flunder and Kashtira. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a good concept to play a hand trap that's just dead a third of the time. Because their chance to open Shifter is about 33%, which means every third game, your Drone Lockbird does nothing. So that's just awful, unfortunately. It's not good. Not Eclipse, stuff like Regeki. Well, yeah, but Regeki is like, significantly worse into every single deck right now. Like, except for, for Flunder. Raigeki is okay against Flunder, but Raigeki is significantly worse against um, Kash Tira, and it's also significantly worse against Tyr. Maybe it's alright to play, like, three Thrust. How good is Evenly against Kash Tira? I don't feel like it's that good. I mean, we've talked about it in the video, but... I don't know. I feel like I feel like your best bet. I really think your best bet for Sprite. Your best bet for Sprite is probably just play Bestial Sprite. Maybe you only play one Lubelion, maybe not three. I really liked it though. Uh I really like Lub I, I missed Lubelion at, at the regional. Like something like this. And then five more cards. And then just build the side deck to counter Kashtira and uh and Flu. I think that's your best bet. I really think so. If you want to if you want to bring Sprite, I think you just focus Sprite on doing as as good as you can. Doing as well as you can into uh into into tier limits and then um hope that your side deck does it against Karstira. And then occasionally you're going to find a Book of Eclipse off uh, in the matchups, right? Yeah, like Book of Eclipse is a solid card I think in Sprite right now. Like, you, you just go like this, you find five more solid tech cards in the main deck. Like, maybe it's Tactics, maybe it's Ash, maybe it's Imperm. Maybe it's more Bestials, even, if you want to go full-on against uh, against tier, right? You could go full Bestials, like, t freaking 12. Uh, and then... And then you f basically make a side deck where you side, like, 10 cards against Kash, Tira, and Flu. Gravekeeper's spell not good enough for the main deck? I don't think it's good enough, no. You could side it, but you don't want to side more against Tyr if you play this kind of time of deck. Kashtira Fenrir with nine bestials? Nah, you can't do that. You can't play Kashtira Fenrir with, with nine bestials, in my opinion.
What about Gamma? Turn one is the same as a Bestial in the tier matchup. It's not the same as a Bestial in the tier matchup. Gamma is terrible against tier. Gamma sucks ass against tier. Would Regained and Beast be a good idea for these builds? No. The uh, I get this question a lot. Also under my recent the 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 Bestial sprite deck that I posted after Frankfurt Regionals. Uh, you don't use you. you I've never summoned Lubelion. I've never summoned Lubelion with Sprite so far. Like, I've never done it. The only reason you play Lubelion is to just search Abyssal and then summon it immediately by banishing Lubelion. That is the best interaction of Lubelion, is you go activate Lubelion, search Magnamute, and then you summon Magnamute before your opponent can Bistial your target. Before your opponent can Bistial your target, because you have no monsters yet. You have no monsters yet, so you're gonna, you know... Third Angler plus Foolish. Uh, you could do that. I don't hate it. I just don't think um, it's that good if you don't play extra targets. This is why I did it together with the Sunfish, and that was nice, but I don't think you should play three Angler if you only have three targets. Because you can only resolve one Angler. So even if you draw Foolish, well, you can resolve the second one, but it can only summon one, which is not very good. So even if you have Foolish, it like doesn't do that much. How good are how good is change of heart and mind control against Kashtira? It's pretty good, right? Pretty good because we just Zeus them. We have to play two Zeus, right? Ah, that's so this, this is so annoying. That might honestly be that might honestly be the most annoying thing about Sprite. The fact that you have to like Play multiples of these freaking extra deck monsters is so annoying. Because sprite extra deck space is already so tight. If he locks five zones, you cannot mind control or change of heart, no. Why is Monster Reborn not played? Because it's, I mean, it's not bad, but the, currently the Ishizu Shufflers just make it impossible to resolve. This one could be okay. This could be okay, where you play, like, one Imperm as a target for tasking in case you have to set going first. This is okay, I think. I don't hate this list, but it only has, like, 10 hand traps. It only has 10 hand traps. But the problem is I really don't think hand traps are that great next format. Overall, I'm not so I'm not so convinced by hand trap. Couldn't the sprite trap? I do not recommend anyone to main deck sprite double cross. Like by playing sprite double cross, you just ask to lose the game going second. I double sprite double cross is not a good card. I don't know. I, I think this is fine. You could do this. Yeah, hold on. You could do this. I don't hate it. I don't hate this. This is fine. How good is Chaos Hunter versus Cash? Uh, Chaos Hunter is okay against Cash Tira, but I think I, the only deck I would play Chaos Hunter in is um, Tier Lament if you play three Agido and three Kelbeck, because then you can just go discard them and be like super happy about it. I don't think um, I don't think other decks want to discard for Chaos Hunter. Because there's like it's it's super bad against tactics. It's super bad against uh, tasking. It's yeah. It's not 
really that amazing. But if you can discard Agido or Kelbeck, it's really good. Labyrinth because Fiend? I mean, the synergy with Fiend. I mean, you can revive it, yeah, but like, I don't know. Have you looked at Puri yet? Uh, Puri only becomes good, I think, after the, uh, after the support in Cyberstorm Axis. Before then, I don't think it's worth playing Puri at all. All right, optimal sorting has been achieved. Wait. I think this is solid. I think the biggest problem for this deck is the extra deck. The extra deck is the bigger problem, actually. What deck are you playing? I'm like... I've said it before. I'm like... 80 to 90 percent sure it's going to be um tier limits simply because i currently don't believe into any of the other options enough uh i know i know it's not going to be pure cash tira and I, I i don't know uh i don't think it's going to be sprite it's definitely not going to be flunder uh, so I have like, I, I'm just like, I'm at a lack of options, basically. I, I would be down, I would be down to play something else or bring something else. If I found something that was worth exploring, I would spend some time testing it, but I just haven't really found, I just haven't really found something that feels worth putting time into, right? I, I just haven't really found anything that feels like worth putting time into when Ishizu Tier is just so strong. Is my problem. Branded Bestial? I, that deck, I mean, the support is nice and all, but I don't think that deck does it. Mikanko Libromancer is not it, trust me. Mikanko Libromancer is not a bad deck, but not for these standards. Mikanko Libromancer would have been a Pog deck at this year's Nationals. Last year's Nationals. Like, half a year ago, hey, that deck is fire. But right now, nah. And Branded Bestial is, like, the same. Like, Branded Bestial would have been really nice if it was around, like, you know, at some other point, but it's not. So, I don't know. Like, Mikanko Libromancer is probably the goo for, like, if you can go into the past seven months, but. At this point in time, there's really no point, I think. I feel like in, in playing something that's not Ishizu tier. And this list isn't even, like, optimized, but, like. What would, what would I do? I probably would cut this. I'm not even sure if I would play this. I kind of like the fact that. If you have Terraforming and Pearl or Rhino, you can grab another field spell, which can then grab you another card. I don't even know if you need Fenrir, though. Yes, yes, yes. Get it twisted. The only reason I I just put these in was because I have the I have the Herald of the Orange Light in the deck, uh, which like feels like it wants to have those, and you also have two hand traps that mill now, so maybe that's good. I don't know. No elf. Uh, I well, Asa goes if I take out the Fenrir's. I think. But yeah, I don't know about Imperm. To be honest, I don't know how much I like Imperm. I don't know how much I like Thrust in the main deck. I don't know. The side deck is not really final at all. Some like this looks okay. There's a lot of cards I want to try, though. There's, like, Bestials that you could play. Thrust is playable. Meta Noise. 
Metanoise, uh, Super Poly. Remind me, what do you Super Poly against uh, Kashtira again? I forgot. They have the, the Mind Hacker and the, the Shangri Era. Are those both, both machines? No, Arise Hard is the one. Wait, uh, Arise Hard. Yeah. So we need Mud Dragon, though. The thing is, okay, I have a question. How likely you think it is? Okay, with this main deck, we wouldn't play the Arise Hard, I think. If they see this extra deck, aren't they inclined to maybe take the Mud Dragon to play around Super Poly? Like, what else do they take as a one-off that's, like, super impactful? They could, they could take Kaleido Heart or uh, Rule Kalos. But... I feel like hitting the Mud Dragon from a Kashtira perspective isn't the worst thing in the world, especially if it's, like, not staple anymore. If Mud Dragon is not completely staple anymore, which I don't know if it will be... Uh... I don't know. I mean, you can still, uh, you can still go Super Poly with any tier on the field, right? To go into... No, wait, same type? No, you can't. Yeah, it's dead then. Against that. You can't get the Arise Heart anymore. So, I don't know. Uh, I don't actually know if you... If you want to do that. So, this is an option. Sprite Elf is an option. Is there anything else in the main deck? Is there anything else that I should consider for the main deck? I guess Eclipse is like a card that I do think is technically main deckable. I do think so. Or Lunar Eclipse. Those cards are main deckable, I think. Technically. I think this is about it. I, and I think this literally sums up like tier limit deck building for uh, for the event. Like, literally, you can try testing this, see which cards you like, see which ones you don't, and then fill up with these. Right? Like, okay, Fenrir is an option, alright? I give you that. Fenrir is an option, definitely. This card is also not, like, stable, and that's like, that's it. By Lunar Eclipse, the discard gets banished so you don't get the mill. Uh, yes, against, um, against Kashtira, it's, it is true, but against Flunder, you can go draw phase, pitch, like, a mill five, and then start playing in draw phase without normal summon and whatnot. It's really, it, it can be really good. But they are both, I, I would say, Book of Eclipse is probably the more, like, consistent of the two. But, I mean, this is, I feel like this is about it. This is about it. This is about what you can expect from tier limit. Like, those cards. If you play against tier, it's going to be those cards. Kurikara can also use for Herald, but not in the main deck. I'm talking main deck. These are not side deck options. I'm talking main deck options. Side deck is like a different story. Thoughts on Mikanko in tier? I think it's cute, but I don't think it's going to be the thing to do in uh, in post-Photon Hypernova anymore. Have you tested Rescue Ace, Impulse, plus Fire Attacker as a better Phantasme? No. Three Rhino surely is better? I'm pretty sure two is correct. Although maybe if people play less Bestials, then Rhino is actually a solid card, so you could consider the third Rhino as well. Double Zeus is mandatory? I think so, yeah. I think you need to play three, uh, two Zeus because of the Kashtira looking at your extra deck and taking one out. And, like, Zeus is by far the best card against Kashtira, I think. And this is, like, it. I think this is it. Like, literally, this is all you have to consider for the tournament. I don't think you have to get fancy or anything like that. I think just, like, build your deck out of these out of these pieces like that's it
and then build a solid side deck around it. Can you comment on runic sprite ideas in this format? Uh, I think um, runic sprite is getting a little bit better with Photon Hypernova because the Gravekeeper's card is really good in it. So if you want to play runic sprite, you have to play Gravekeeper's Inscription because then you can stop the Graveyard Shufflers and the Tier Limit from playing and then you can use Fountain again. It's, a, it's finally a card again. But it's still not great. Can you comment on Paleo this for? Don't do me like that. Don't do me like that. Do you think you can disrespect Kashtira in the tier main deck? Uh, I think your best bet, your best bet at beating Kashtira in the main deck is A, hope they don't draw Shifter, which is something that is absolutely not in your control. You can't do anything about that. If they have Shifter, they have Shifter. And B, just play. Just have Hapness or, or Tielemans Kashtira. Like, that's what you need, pretty much. That's what you need. That's, 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 what, the, that's what does all the magic, I think. It's like, if, if they go first and you don't have one of those, what else are you going to have? Like, okay, you could make these Imperms. You could make these Imperms be, like, tactics. Maybe that's better, going second into the deck, but that's pretty much it. The Gravekeeper spell does not hurt Runic at all. The Gravekeeper spell only says you the, you can't activate cards effect in the graveyard. The only card that that potentially hurts is Cap Shell, so you don't play Cap. Do you don't play Cap Shell anymore? But yeah, this is uh this is my take on Tier Limit currently, which is very very basic. And I I like I have no problem sharing it either because I don't think there there needs to be a big secret about it. There's like no big deal about Tillman going on in this format. What do you think Sword Soul needs to become relevant in this meta? A huge ban list. That's what Sword Soul needs. Sword Soul needs a big ass ban list that hits a couple of decks before it gets viable again, like before it actually gets good again. The one card here that I would probably take out the most likely is Imperm, even though Imperm is good against all the people playing Triple Tactics Thrust. Wouldn't a big hit on Ishizu be enough? I don't think so. Shifter time for a ban? I mean, in my book, we can always ban Shifter. Like, I'm down, but okay. Uh, okay. Now, what's the, what's the situation with Kashtira? What are people doing with the, the remaining spots in Kashtira? Because that's one that I'm a little bit more, like, unsure about what to fill this deck up with. Like, how, what does this deck have problems with? Going second. Like, why are people playing? Like, for example, one thing I don't even understand or that I'm not sure about is, like, why are people playing uh, Tierleman's Kashtira in this deck? I feel like that's a little bit weird. I don't think this card is that good in everything that isn't Tierleman. Like, why is this... Uh, why is this here? I don't get it. Any Kashtira mains tell me, like, why this is great? Level 7 extender? Yeah, but doesn't doesn't this one just do this better? Doesn't this one do it better? Wait, it's, just, it's the same thing, actually. It's the same condition. Hmm. Mill three extra cards? Yeah, but only if you have shifter, right? Only if you have shifter or... I don't know if I would play this. As a different attribute for Papaya. Mm. We, uh, what is this, card, this card's name in English again now? Kashtira Theosis? Why'd they do that? Anyways, 
So how does this deck win going second if we don't draw shifter? Is basic is I feel like what these last cards have to answer. And tactics is probably good in general in this deck. Although you can't draw after prosperity, but that feels fine. I, I don't hate the idea of playing a Necro Valley, although if you're playing against me in at YCS uh Leon, please don't do that. Just don't activate it, you know. Forbidden Lance. What's the idea behind Forbidden Lance? Why is Forbidden Lance here? Play around Imperm, play around what? Tactics? Eclipse? Ah. But we're not gonna main deck we're not gonna main deck Forbidden Lance, are we? There's no way. The new GK spell is okay. I do think you could play inscription. Oh wait, it's not in here. Hold up. Oh wait, you told me not to search for custom cards on stream. Hold up. Okay, we're saved. <laughs> oh wait, it's probably in here just as an OCG card, right? Oh yeah, engraving. There it is. I don't hate this. I don't hate this. I don't know if I would. I if you if you want to, you can try it. I think like I, I, I would be down to try it. I, I just feel like the mirror match becomes very weird if you play three shifter, three engraving or inscription. Joshua now has mm. perfect information. Great content as always, Joshua. Keep up the good work. Always good hearing your views on the meta. Yo, thank you, Supreme King. Thank you for the prime. Appreciate you. Glad you're enjoying the content. Click my link, Madge. All right, I have clicked your link. Uh, and I don't know about that one, Chief. I mean, it's like standard stuff, except for I don't like Reaper at all. Maybe Adventure Engine? You can try Adventure Engine, although I probably think it's better to just side deck Ibli if you're afraid of Nib. I think that's the better approach. Could play tasking. You could do this. Instead of playing uh, three talents, you could play one talents with tasking or thrusting and uh, an evenly matched. That way you only have one evenly in your deck, but you still have technically four copies for going second, which should be the bigger problem for this deck anyways. And then going first, if you get hit by... If you get... Like, the only way you get stopped going first, right? The only way you get stopped going first is probably if they have Havnis or Tillemans Kashtira. So, in that case, you can just go Thrust for uh, Terraforming into Necro Valley. Why evenly over Dark Ruler? Feels better against tier to go evenly. You're welcome, Alex. I'm doing great. How about you? The uh, I I feel like evenly is better going second against. Uh, you can't activate terraforming the turn is set. You can add it to hand if they have a monster. You can add it to hand uh, on the turn if they have a monster, so it's fine. Now, what is the freaking Kashira mirror match about? Can someone tell me that? Because to me, it just feels like whoever makes the board first probably wins. I want to ask if you stream Master Duel. I do stream Master Duel. Yes, I stream both. I stream TCG and Master Duel. Hmm. 
Mm. Okay, you know what? I don't know if it's that, if I don't know if this is a good idea, but let me play a Kashira mirror match. <laughs> this might be final last uh, famous last words, but let me play a Kashira mirror match. Let me just fill this up. And let me see what the Kashira mirror match is about. Just uh yeah, this this might be a troll despair situation, but hold up. I don't know. Let me just fill this up. Okay. Reasonable enough. Now someone play me with Kashira, please. Just one game. Just one game, please. Password is Josh. All right, there we go. All right, we've lost the coin flip. That's the first thing. Step number one. If we go first against the tier, this, if we play against tier, this, this hand is fire. Now, where do we imperm? Do we just wait for the... Do we wait for the uh, Diablosis or something? Or do we just hope they don't have the extender? Now we're level 4. I'm, I'm doing it here. They, they don't have the extender. They don't have it. 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 They pass. Easy clap. Easy win. The easiest win of them all. I told you, boys. Who was... Who was... Who was doubting? Now, what do I do with this Gravekeeper's engraving? <laughs> Tell you what I do with it. I do nothing with it. It's completely gone. Like, I don't do shit with it. Uh... Uh, I'm gonna prosp, and if I get ashed, I have tasking. Uh, I... I'm probably just gonna... Get rid of the one-ofs. Four, five, six, I don't care, let's just get rid of these. Pop, 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 pop. All right, do we grab Fenrir or the field spell first? Probably Fenrir, just Fenrir. No, I probably field into Fenrir. Don't say shifter. Easy clap. Clapping up the Kashtera mirror match like it's my job. Imperms the Fenrir. I Activate unicorn. 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 Ah, sneaky. It doesn't matter. We have papaya. Uh... Imperm was middle. Easy. So, special summon with a different attribute in defense position. Uh, getting Unicorn seems kind of pointless here because I already have birth. But I probably still do. That. Or do I just get this thing? No, I'm just going to grab another Unicorn, I think.
Oh wait, no, you're right. I do get I do get the level four. Well, because I have birth. Uh during your main phase, you can banish a Kashira card from your deck. Bop. Banish. There's no shot you activate Unicorn now. I don't believe you. Okay, weird. So now I just go Fenrir, banish the field spell, and tasking into talents into look at your hand. Rip Diablosis. Oh wait, Fenrir is negated, right? I still go tasking to just look at hand, right? Cause I'm, or can we, can we just, uh, can we win? Is this game? Birth, special unicorn. Oh, we have prosperity. We prosperity. Never mind. Uh oh. wait. I feel like I have to take the tasking. Because those are both one card starters, and if I leave them with a one card starter and tasking, that's a problem. So I might as well just do this. Activate birth. Special unicorn. Effect unicorn. Add a follow up. Papias. The problem is I can't activate. I can't activate Shangri Era. I don't have Diablosis anymore. They took my Diablosis with Unicorn. Maybe I should have just attacked. Maybe I should have just attacked with Fenrir. You can heart make. I can heart make a rise hard. I can heart make a rise hard. But then I end on just a rise hard. Is that good enough? Zeus doesn't sound bad. I don't think my Zeus is big enough. Big eye Zeus. And then what? What do, what do you mean after ripping their hacker? I'm confused what you mean by after ripping their hacker because I can't make my own hacker. Zeus with hella materials. I mean, I can make a Zeus with four materials so it can pop twice. So when they summon Fenrir, I pop that. When they activate Field Spell, I pop that. But I lose my own follow-up as well. I have, like, no follow-up. I need to top deck, like, what? Uh, rise hard. Now, what if I, what if I just Shangri-Era in defense and put up my own Unicorn and Fenrir in the standby phase again? How does that 
Make Era attack with Unicorn, then a Rise Heart on top of Unicorn. I can't make a Rise Heart. I haven't used Changri Era's effect. It triggers when you attack? Wait. Each time a card your opponent owns and possesses... Banished fate. Wait, what? How? Oh, unicorn triggers. That would, that's what you mean. No, that's the play. I forgot that unicorn triggers when it attacks. Oh, they play two mind hacker. All right. I see how you get. Uh, I see how you get. Okay, so... Do we take both hackers? Or do we take both Arise Hearts? Or Big Eye? Because their play... Their play is probably going to be... Special Fenrir Activate Effect. So after that, I can trigger Unicorn. So I can I can take out two cards. I don't think it's Big Eye, guys. It's not Big Eye. Brothers in Christ, it is not Big Eye. I think it's Mind Hacker or a Rizard. I think it's a Rizard. Arise. Where'd it go? Oh, wait. Yo, they were smooth with that. All right. Uh, effect. And then... And now... Pass. I forgot Wraith Soft, you're right. I could have popped this. Yeah. So they have Fenrir, another planet. They have Fenrir, another planet. Do we pop this with a Rise Heart or do we pop Fenrir? Uh, this banishes face up, right? No, banish it face down. Banish Fenrir face down. Uh, I think I'm gonna. Oh. Wait, is that how? No, that's not how it goes, right? There's no way it's chain link one or rise hard. I'm confused. Anyways, uh, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna banish. I know I must arise the the thingy, but I'm gonna I'm gonna pop this. And then. Uh, so I'm going to attach. Does it matter what I attach? Oh, no, I'm just, res I'm just doing, I'm just doing stuff. Target three cards in your opponent's graveyard, banish them. Uh... Thinking on birth. Wait, birth summons from banished or grave. There's no real point in doing it though. I mean, I guess I'm going to banish these. And this is attach a banished. Bop. 
I'm just going to attach your unicorn, sir. Beep. Oh, it banishes them face down. Well, in this case, oh, if it's face down, I'll leave the unicorn there. Up. Just, just act like it's face down. It's fine. Oh my god, I hate this already. That's well, just whatever. I'm just attaching IP mask arena now because I feel like it. Wait, did they just shift her? No, they didn't. <laughs> Special Fenrir, yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, they can attack my unicorn now. Oh my god, I hate this already. I'm gonna attach this back. There's like 99% chance that I could have played this better. Turn one, but... Rhoda top deck. All right. Well then. They even play four copies of Rizehard. That's crazy. In a 43 card deck. Why'd you go over 40 to do that? Oh my god. Stop. Uh, I've always wanted a Link Spider as material. Unicorn and the rest are face down. Yeah. How many materials you want? A rice heart? Yes. I mean, the good thing is now... Wait, so if Rise Heart activates, banishes for cost, does my Arise Heart immediately chain to that? Or does it trigger out? It triggers after, right? I feel like it triggers after. Uh, so banish, 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 three, and attach. Give me that birth. Give me that. Oh my god, you have to give that to me. Give me. <laughs> Bro. This is the fattest Zeus in the history of Zeus's. Hey, stop. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? <laughs> oh my god. Whatever you do, do not play... Whatever you do, do not play Kashtira on Dueling Book, dude. Holy shit. No! Don't take my fat rice hard. Please. No! Oh my god. Wait, this thing is not hard once per turn? They can use it now? Oh my god. They they take my fat 
Oh, I should have taken the big guy. Oh, I should have taken the big guy. Oh, yes. Oh, wait. No. You can't. Yeah, yeah, they can't, they can't, they can't, they can't. I mixed it up. If it was hard once per turn, they could have used it. But it's not hard once per turn, it's once per copy. So we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Now, imagine if this, imagine if this Gravekeeper's engraving in my hand was a real card. Wouldn't that be just awesome? How many materials does this thing have? One, two, they have, okay, enough. Many. Thankfully, they did not battle with a freaking Xyz. Noted. I'm gonna make the fattest Zeus now. <laughs> I am making the fattest Zeus. In the history of Zeus's. You Gravekeepers triggers tactics? I think I'm just going to use Birth. I think they're just going to activate the Arise Start anyways to get rid of Birth. They have to, I feel like. Ah. Uh, Fenrir. Birth doesn't target? It that doesn't matter. Okay, we get a free search, pog. So, I'm just going to grab a rise hard, I feel like. Yes. So, I'm going to activate Papias now. They're going to chain Fenrir. Or I'm going to special. I'm just going to special this, I think. There's some discard from your hand, yeah. I should just activate it engraving. No, I'm trying to force this freaking thing. Uh effect. Banish rice hard. I'm going to banish Big Bang doesn't do anything. I could banish Papias just to get another Rice Hard. All right then. <laughs> My god, this deck is stupid. The deck is ridiculous. The deck is being ridiculous right now. Uh take <laughs> Oh god, how many materials is that? I mean, probably like 10. Oh no. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I think it's 8. You're just like building a freaking like stack on your mat with this thing. 
The thing is, what do they banish here? Do they banish itself? Well, if you banish itself, I'm just taking your big eye. And I'm also chilling. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Give me your big eye then. Ah. So Papias special doesn't really matter what. It's not gonna be game. Once again. 5k, because this summons in defense, right? 5k. Is there a rank 7 with 2,000 attack? There's only this. Scareclaw, Kashira can attack. Oh! Wait, you can just attack in defense position. Oh, the field spell also boosts. Isn't it just game? <laughs> this is so stupid. Attack! <laughs> Wait, what do you mean think end of main phase? Ah, oh, no! Wait. The... Arise. Wait, 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 wait. Why is there? Oh, no. Uh, okay. But I have Fenrir banished still. Uh, this. Yeah. Well, Fenrir. F. Now, what are you going to mill? What are you Wait, hold on. Can they mill something? No, they I don't think they can. Yeah, there's no shot. Oh, adventure. Easy. Woo! Now, take that. Take that 2,900 from my Scareclaw Kashtira in defense. Yeah. <laughs> what did we learn from this mirror chat? Uh... First of all, some of these cards have way too many effects. Like, some of them have secondary effects that they shouldn't. Uh, then, the second thing is, do not play this deck on Dueling Book. For the love of God, please. For the love of God, do not play this deck on Dueling Book. Um, and also, Talents is pretty good against this freaking deck. With the Brave Engine, don't have a, you don't even have zones to attach from Banish. <laughs> My god, okay, well, uh, that was something. <laughs> that was something. I don't know if I would play this card. I don't know if I'd play this card. But honestly, maybe in this deck, it's reasonable to play three tactics, three tasking, dude. Just for going second, board breaking, and in the mirror match, like, really good. Looks like a race to banish Diablosis. Honestly, I feel like maybe you don't even play any of these Link monsters. They, I, I don't know why I threw these in here at the beginning. But I feel like maybe you just play more of the extra deck stuff. Of the XCs. Because honestly, I have never... I haven't played a shit ton of Cash Tira yet. I haven't played a lot of Kash Tira yet, but I've played some. I've played some, and like the 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 links almost never came up. So I feel like you would be playing a second Diabolosis, and then if maybe you play like they, they played a second Shangri, maybe that's all right. You know, maybe you play some like this. Maybe even two Big Eye. Big Eye seems pretty nice.
Goliath for sure. Uh, Infinitrack. Goliath. One non-link Infinitrack monster. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, target an XYZ. Ah, I see. You attach it to uh, I you attach it to a rise heart. I feel you. Okay, that 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 makes sense. I like that. Uh, and then you can play the arm the dragon link, right? This thing seems okay. And then whatever, dude. Donner. Donner feels okay. Donner feels like the one card you might want. I could see this. I could see this extra deck. Lingaribo? The problem with Lingaribo is this is for the mirror match, right? In case they play Ibli. Then you need two, though. Like, one is no point. Goddess is also something you could play. Like, those are like. Those you can consider, I think. No red eyes flare. I don't know if you need red eyes flare. I don't know how uh, this deck feels like it plays relatively fast. I don't know. Like uh, some people still might want it, but I personally feel like this deck would play very fast. For the most part, is big guy that good at too? Maybe you don't need the second one. It just felt like it feels like when you already because like if if my opponent is looking at this extra deck right, if my opponent looks at this, they banish big guy right. So that's like the most vulnerable spot in the in the extra deck for Mind Hacker. Now that we're playing all the other ones at extra copies, right? You might as well play the big guy to be to protect it. I don't know. Maybe you don't though, because it feels like playing one big guy is like playing zero big guys. If you know what I mean, like if you if you play one big guy in the mirror match, you're not playing big guy <laughs> technically, right? So I don't really know if there's a point in playing a lot of one ofs here in general. What does Dracozak do? Dracozak makes two tokens, and Dracozak can also pop uh, stuff. How are you playing Ibli in this? You A lot of people play Ibli in this, in the side deck, to stop Nibiru. You almost never make Dracozak or the Dark Armed Dragon, I think. You make these, you make these very rarely. Same as Donner, but they're like utility removal. I think it's okay to play one of each. I don't know. Something like this feels reasonable for Kashtira, but honestly, I'm still not too I'm still not too thrilled about the deck. It feels okay. But that's about it. It feels okay, that's about it. Um Yeah. I don't know. Now, I don't think Engraving is the last card for the main deck, though. What would be another card that you would want to play in the main deck? Like... Lava Golem? Lava Golem? Book? I mean, we could play Book. We could play Book of Eclipse for the mirror match. If they do pull off full combo, it's pretty nice. Birth. This feels all right. Not quite sure if imperm is like what you're looking for, but you kind of need it if you go first with three tasking in your deck. Three tasking, three TTT is too much. Well, you might be right. You might be right. My current my current take on this is that. If you go first and your opponent doesn't play into tasking or talents, you're probably winning the game anyways. Uh If you yeah, if you go first and your opponent doesn't play into these, you probably win the game anyways. Like most of your your one card combos win the game. And uh going second, they are like pretty nice. You could play less. I don't mind cutting them, but like I I feel like it's worth trying at least. Why one evenly? Because you can search it off of tasking. That's the reason for the evenly.
The only problem with these is that if people play like if people play cards like Book of Eclipse in the main deck, your full combo actually doesn't win the game, right? Like you you go full card you go full combo, they don't have any interruptions, you can still lose to their Book of Eclipse or tasking or talents or whatever. That's the problem of this version, I think. I feel like. So if you want to if you want to cover for that though I don't know what exactly what you would do cuz it feels like to me honestly if this deck goes first you don't have shifter you pull off your combo and your opponent has eclipse you just lose I feel like I feel like that's how you do adventure version could be better adventure version could be okay you could try that I don't I haven't tried that one how many wait adventure is like 10 slots though right uh, hold on. Adventure. Oops. That's like this plus full. It's like nine. Yeah, it's nine. Oh, it was ten. I remember ten because with with illegal knight it was ten. So this would be nine slots. So you would take out like. Like, what, what do you take out? The tasking and the talents completely? That feels like a stretch. Also, Foolish is weird against Mudora and Keldo. Like, I don't know. It doesn't win any conflicts with Shifter, so you probably don't need Foolish. Oh, yeah, with Foolish, it's 10. But, yeah. So you play 9. Yeah, I mean, you have to take out, like, you have to take out the, the other non-engine, right? Whatever you want it, which is, like, questionable decision. It is cool that Griffin Rider alone... Wait, no, it's not actually a good extender in this deck, because you, you have to summon it on empty board, and then, uh, yeah, no, it sucks. But then you played Cherubini as well, right? You played Cherubini, so you can go Draco Sack into tokens into Cherubini, but then, uh, I don't know. This feels weird. It feels weird, but it's not bad, probably. D Fissure is playable, I think. I don't know if I would main deck it, because I would be too worried about the mirror match. Like, I, I think one nice thing about this deck... One nice thing about this list right now is that it's, like, equally strong against mirror match... Blunder and Tier Limit, right? It has against Tier Limit, it has like the shifters, the Necro Valley, and a couple of tech cards. But all of those tech cards, except for Shifter Necro Valley, are also good against Flunder and Kash Tira. Agito, Kelbeck, Milling, Fateful, Griffin is brutal. You are correct. You are correct. However, I do think that when you're playing a deck like Kash Tira, you should just be in the in the mindset of if your opponent resolves Akido or Kelbeck for mil five, you lose the game anyways. Like if that happens, you, the game is over anyways for you, which I believe to be true. I think that's the case. Like if your opponent resolves Kelbeck or Akido against this deck, it's over. It's over. It's absolutely over. No shot you win. I think. I feel like the deck can't really beat Tier going second without Shifter. Well, yeah, that, most likely not, no. But that's why Tier is the best deck in the format. I don't know what you want to do about it. Like, the only... <laughs> there's, only two, uh, there's only two things we can do. We can either accept that or we can, we can play Tier, right? Which I'm probably going to do. <laughs> Speaking of, I'm not going to play this deck, but I think it's like... I, yeah, I don't think it's awful. But it's also just like, I mean, look at this. Okay. Rise hard. How much, ri how much is rise hard? 15 for YCS Leon? Throw me a number. 15? We're going to calculate how much this deck is right now. How much do you think you'd have to pay for rise hard at the, y the YCS Leon venue? If I walked in there and I wanted to play this deck, what would I, what would I pay? 20 ish? 20? 15 to 20? All right, let's say. Let's say I'm paying 50 for the playset. That seems reasonable, right? I'm playing 50, all right? I'm paying 50 for the playset. Fenrir, how much is Fenrir? 60? So that's 180. What's Unicorn at right now is like also roughly 50 for the set, right? Okay. Uh, this thing is worthless. Shifter is not worth talking about. Prosperity is like 40, right? 
How much is a Prosperity right now? Cheapest version. Like the Mega Pack one. 40? Alright. 120 for a playset of Prosperities. How much is... How much do you think... How much do you reckon I'd have to pay for Kashtira Theosis at the venue? 50? Hundred eighty playset, one hundred fifty minimum, fifty, sixty each, fifty ish. All right, let's say let's let's be let's be optimistic and let's say fifty each. Hundred and fifty. All right. Uh Planet? How much is Planet? Same or more? A little bit more, right? Because it's like useful in other decks as well. Let's say sixty on the planet. Let's be let's be optimistic again. Let's say sixty. More? Seventy? All right, how about we do 200 for a set? How about we do, we do 200 for a set? Let's say 200 for the set, okay? Which I think is, op is optimistic, but could also be okay. Tactics, what did we say earlier? 50 each? That's the talents price from earlier? 60. Only 50? That was a roughly the pre-sale. was roughly 50 to 60 bucks. I think, that, I think that's reasonable. Let's say 60 then. Let's say, let's say place at 180. What is Talents at? What's the cheapest copy of Talents? Bro, this deck is so expensive. What's the cheapest copy of Talents? 15? Alright, another 45-er. Uh, Necro Valley, we can, like, nah, it's a couple bucks, but okay. This, this, this. Imperm is a couple bucks, but we'll disregard it. Let's disregard the one of evenly. You don't have to play that. What's the, what's the cheapest Zeus? The cheapest Zeus is also like 20 at this point, right? They've gone up, I feel like. 25? 20? Closing in on 30? Okay, let's say 40 for two Zeus's. Let's say we get a good deal or we already have that. Okay. And then a Rise Heart. Throw me a number for two A Rise Hearts. A Rise Heart, what do we say? 25? I'm throwing a number out there. 25 for two for one Arise Heart. 50 for both. 30 each. Okay, 30 each. All right, 30 each. 60. Oh my god. All right, that totals up to... That totals up to 230, 280, 400, 550, 750, 830... 890, 975. 975 plus the plus the cheap stuff. So pretty much without a side deck. Without a side deck and relatively optimistic calculations. This deck is just a wreck. And this is without a side deck. Now, most side deck cards... I missed 100. Did I miss Calc? 230, 280, 400, 550, 750, 90. Oh, I, I did. I did. Pepe got clapped. It's over 1,000. It's over 1,000 without a side deck. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey. Uh. And look... This deck is not, not really anything else other than just fancy Flunder. Now, I will say, I will say that this deck is more consistent than Flunder. At least it feels like. It feels more consistent than Flunder, but still, it's not that good. It's not that good, dude. And even if some of those prices go down, even if you can get, like, even if you can get the, the field spell for 50s, and the papaya for like 35s, that's still like a lot. That's still a lot of money, dude. Oh, God. Isn't flu better going second? I mean, only because it plays like Dark Ruler or Evenly. We could play those two, technically. I don't know, man. This is just not worth it. This is, I, I personally feel like it's not a good investment as a deck, just like, because it's not the best deck right now. 
The only world I can see this deck ever becoming the best is if we get a relatively early ban list, or like, I mean, the ban list is hella late, but let's be real. But like, if we get a ban list relatively soon, and it hits tier limit really hard, but it doesn't hit this deck because it's so new, right? If they, they could make this the best deck if they really wanted to. Although, I'm not sure if they can, actually. Never mind. I don't know if they can make this deck the best deck. Because I feel like in any environment where Karsh Tira is the best deck, I'm just playing a freaking power spell deck, and I'm just picking that board apart. That board has no back row, no negates. I'm just, like, change of hearting that thing. It's, like, kind of easy to beat if, it, if this was ever the best deck. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just playing, like, tactics, tasking, talents... Book of Eclipse, Mind Controls, Change of Heart. Like, I'm beating that deck. Well, I mean, I don't know. Realistically, the ban list is going to be after Vegas. I, I personally have no idea. I have no idea. If I had to guess, if I had to guess, I would say we will get a YCS. <laughs> Not a YCS. We, I would say we will get a ban list before YCS London. That is my guess. I think they will let us play YCS Lyon with the current ban list. They will let us play YC they will let people play YCS Mexico and YCS Las Vegas with the ban list. And then we are in early, we are still talking middle middle of February. And then YCS London is the 1st of April, so one and a half months later. I think that's reasonable to expect the ban list before YCS London. At some point in these one and a half months, I'm expecting a ban list. Have you already chosen your deck for Lyon? I have not, but I am. I I have no problem being honest about it. I'm probably gonna play tier limits. I think there's little reason to play something else right now. Tier limits just seems like by far the best deck. I've set myself like a. Basically, there's about two weeks until YCS Lyon. Ah, well, one and a half weeks now, and I will. My my decision process is going to be. I'm going to give myself a couple days to test some stuff that is not tier limits until the weekend, basically. And then on the weekend, I'm going to decide whether I want to go with a different deck or whether I want to go tier limits. And then I will spend the, the, the remainder of the week until YCS Leo happens to perfect that deck and like practice it and, and be good at it. Um, but for now... I don't even have anything in mind before you ask, oh, what's that other choice? I don't have another choice yet. I don't have another choice. I'm gonna like I'm gonna like dabble around with some sprite. I'm gonna try some labyrinth. I don't know. Maybe that I like the labyrinth deck. I just don't think it's strong enough, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh so like I'm gonna be uh I'm gonna be uh focusing on on rogue decks this this week in my testing, and then next week I'm gonna settle on whatever and then go with that. Are you going by train or plane to Lyon? I go by train. I, I always try to go by train when possible. Or like, I, I go by train if it's within Europe. How do you test IRL? Uh, it's like a mix. Depends who I test with. Sometimes I, I have friends over to test. But often I also just... Uh, often I also just... Um, play on online london by train i will also go um i will also go to london by train yes it's like it's a long long journey and it's a lot more expensive than flying but what do you what you don't do for the planet huh? no i'm gonna go by train to to london You scared of flying? I'm not scared of flying. But I don't want to like it's uh they are going uh, it's we were going in a in a in a dire in a direction that we didn't really want to go but it's like it's mostly for env uh environment reasons. The emissions of flying are pretty awful. So I'm not I'm not flying if I can avoid it.
What's your favorite card in Yu-Gi-Oh? Colossal Fighter. But I have many that are close. Uh, does anyone have does anyone have a branded list post Photon Hypernova that I can look at that you actually think is like solid? This is your one chance at an early deck doctor sneak peek. Because this is the one deck I have like that I was planning to look at today. That is the one deck I was planning to look at today with the Photon Hypernova support on uh, uh, on top of the decks that we already have looked at. Because we already looked at Gishki Sprite. I think this is reasonable for Gishki Sprite. Uh, but branded is like one thing. That I have not really uh, looked into at all. Whenever I look at Branded, I'm like, man, I wish I could play more of these cards, right? Like, it's already 42 cards and I, there's only like, what is it? Five, six bestials? I want to play more than these. But well, it's probably fair enough. Oh, the branded in white for the new lines. All right, I see. We doing matches with branded? I mean, hey, look. I am... Why not? Run it. Any Kash Tira player? Uh, no, any tournament player. Run it. I don't even know the combos. Password is Josh. Any tournament players? Run it. I'd love to see you play. See, I, I've watched the turn one combos uh, once. But I kind of forgot. So I'm going to have to... Okay, we're going to go first. If we have branded fusion, I'm gonna, we're going to have to do some research. Okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, sick. Now, we do play... Let me pull this up here. We do not play Branded Lost. We do play Branded Lost, so I could go Alubra into Branded Lost. Ha <laughs> I forgot. Okay, let's our opponent can do the combo for us. <laughs> so I have branded fusion. Do I go for opening? Oh no, we're doomed. No. Okay, hold up, hold up. Now, normally, I would just say, don't we just go opening this card beast? Because we get that back for free anyway. No, we don't. This is not the one you get back for free. Ah, oh, god damn it. We have the wrong one. Uh, so we probably discard Cartesia. Oh my god, this is troll despair. Or do we just go branded fusion? But we have to go Albion. Uh, I'm just going to do this. Discard Beast, get Alubert for loss, but why do I discard Beast? Do I need Cartesia? Oh. <laughs> they sniped me. Probably, I don't know. Okay, well, I'm. Yeah, oh, look. Take the wheel. Get Aluber for lost. Aluber for lost. Activate lost. Activate branded fusion. Okay, let's do it 50 50. Okay, we will both contribute to this. I'm sending the Albaz, and you send... 
equal equal contribution year. All right. I swear, hold up. Hold up. Joshua now has perfect information. Why was it Thanks not again for the goldfish? No, it, it's not that. Yo, Droll Lol, think of it a three months. Appreciate you. Did it arrive, the sunfish? Did the sunfish arrive? I'm also, I'm a little confused. Because now we're just doing the, the standard uh, combo from last format. What do I fuse into? This is Lubelion? Lubelion, then Mirror Jade. So this and this. This is the worst combo I've ever seen in my life. Oh, wait, lost ad. All the new combos need bestials? Yeah, but why are we only playing like five? I am confusion. And now what do we add? Merc? And what do I discard? Cartesia? I mean, I just copied this. Anyways, I'm winning anyways. I don't care. I'm doing old, I'm doing old branded combos. I don't care. Pop. Pop. I'm ending, I'm ending Mirror Jade. Bop. Bop. I don't care. I'm doing the old combos. I don't care. That's how we did it in the old days. I'm gonna get a free, free branded regained, which I can't use. And now I can uh, set, like, in the end phase. <laughs> I'm gonna Albion set, like, a branded in red that I can't use. The branded manuscript. Oh, nah. Do I play banishment? I don't play banishment. Perfect. Perfect. Retribution? Alright. Retribution it is then. It's cursed. There's no way we're beating tier with this. There's no way we're beating tier with this. We are doomed. It's completely done. It's over. No shot. We have a Mirror Jade Banish, a Merc. Alright, that's already done. That's game. That's game, dude. Oh yeah, add Cartesia back. Never mind. Quick effect, chain. Chain. Cartesia. <laughs> uh... Yes. Oh, God, no. Okay. They're just not going to mill anything? Ah, oh, they can chain block the Kelbeck. Oh, no. Stop getting it twisted. Hold up. Chain links? Saliak 1, Kelbeck 2. Hey, yo, look, I even asked. I'm murking that. I'm murking that real hard. I asked. I even asked. Uh-oh. Yo, they wanted that. Oh, they wanted that. I've been fooled. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yes. Mm. Take. Well, I'm just going to... Uh... Oh! Wait. Return to the extra deck. Sec, 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 sec. 
Uh, oh, it's completely... Yeah, okay. Well, uh... Now, couldn't I... Couldn't I return my... Couldn't I return my Mirror Jade to the extra deck? And then I banish my own Lubelion. <laughs> no, wait. I will. I'll just do this. Bop. The haveness. The have. And then I'll still banish the Sharon and give you this thing. And then... They can trigger Havness, but they would have to fuse from hand, which, I mean, of course they will. And then I will just regain the... The Sharon. I'm just gonna draw a Bistial. I have just decided that. It's not that hard. Okay, Hafn is already used. Rhino Heart Dedge. Magnamood that, Sharon, real quick. Oh, wait, you can, yeah, you can, of course. <laughs> this is ridiculous already. If we win this, this is ridiculous. This deck needs more... No, not my Alba Lenatus. Uh, wait, can't I use... You can only use one effect per turn? Oh my god, Retribution is ass, dude. Okay, well. Well, we don't die, right? Do we? This is 2028. So, 48... 4873. We're alive with the West. We lose. Oh wait, no, I have to put this back. Never mind. I thought I, I was for, I was confused why they banished. That's what they meant. Well, hold on, what's happening here? Oh, sprint. I forgot about sprint, of course. 14, 39, still not game. 35, no, Kaleido Heart's not game. Yes. Of course, by the way, the one that they didn't mill is Murley. How is it always not Murley? How is Murley always left at the end? How? Can someone explain that to me? You can't. Fourteen, twenty-five, thirty-five. Oh, barely alive. Wait, isn't this Pog? Banish Merc, trigger regained, and the Banish? Oh. Gimme. <laughs> I don't think they intended that. Lubelion came home. Pog. Hello. Welcome back.
<laughs> Loop effect. Wait, we still lose. Do we? I think we still lose. Because what's gonna happen is... Uh, dude, Chill Event is just too strong for this deck. It's very simple. Uh, what is Cartesia? Wait. If this card is fusion summon, send a level 6 or higher from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard if a monster... So I'm gonna declare... I'm going to declare Soronir. They're going to chain Keldo. I'm going to chain Bestial. They're going to negate with Rule Kalos. Can't negate Cartesia's effect to fuse. Yeah, and then what? Do I special proskin? Am I just winning? But if the thing is, I have to I have to summon into scream then. Sandra, do you have a shuffler? Yeah. And now the rule cows is gonna come back, the scream is gonna trigger, and if the scream hits, we're just like molding. Just miss. Just miss one time, please. Oh, <laughs> Trigger regain, nothing was banished, and we milled nothing. Oh, God. okay, yeah, all right. Hey. Look. <laughs> oh, to summon Magnamood back. Because I'm talking to Bissy and the Gary Special Summon. Oh, yeah, I could have gotten the Magnamood back. But uh, I don't think that does it here. Somehow. <laughs> I don't think that does it. Well, maybe it does, but like it probably doesn't. You should just Cartesia. And get Fusion back. Okay, I'm like, I'm like 90% uh, sure that you can make Branded a semi-decent deck. Yeah, probably. Either way, I just uh, hope screen misses, but it never does. Oh yeah, maybe it was better to go Cartesia first. Don't like the ratios too much. I mean, it's like... The, uh... The ratio, I don't know. I Honestly, hey, I'm, I'm the last one to comment on this because I there's people that have tried this deck way more than I have up until this point. I don't even know the standard first turn combo. What is this? Branded inevitable. Is this in Photon Hypernova? Once per turn, when your opponent activates a card effect that targets a base seal you control, or when your opponent activates effect in response to a base seal, you can target a light or a dark and either grave banish it. Okay. 
what's it what's it do though like what is it for and what is uh branded light target a fusion on the field or in the grave return to the extra deck then you can special summon Branded Light. Target a fusion monster on the field or in either grave. Return it to the extra deck. Then you can special summon a Fallen of Albas from your grave and one monster from your opponent's grave to their owner's field. So you can only activate a Branded Light per turn. Okay. It bounces rule colors? No, it doesn't. It gets negated by rule colors because it has an effect that summons. Here's a cleaner list. Maybe. I don't know, man. It's it's something I would like. It's one of those decks that when I say I want to try them, it's it, this deck is like one of those decks that I do want to try um, a little bit more. But I first need to come up with like a, a version that I like. Uh, this one looks a little bit more like it. So the, the thing about this deck is this deck has two problems. This deck has two problems, but three problems. First of all, Ishizu tier is freaking busted. So you're competing with that. The second problem is... Your your whole engine is like kind of mediocre against Flunder and Kashtira. Like I don't know how you beat that. Like look at this extra deck. Look at this extra deck and tell me how you win against Kashtira going second. You can't. They just take apart your entire shit. Like it's just gone. No more Lubelion. Whatever. Like it's just it's not happening. And then also, uh, like you lose to you lose to. I feel like you lose way too hard to uh, tasking. But, yeah, it's something I'm down to try. But, hey. Uh, we've hit 5 p.m. We've hit 5 p.m., which means, unfortunately, I gotta go now. <laughs> As it happens every day. There has... All good things have to come to an end. Hey, I appreciate all of you guys watching. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Uh, it was a, it was a very pleasant stream. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the time we had. Uh, I hope to see you guys again tomorrow. Uh, thank you for all the follows. Thank you for all the subs. Appreciate all of you. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And don't forget that, don't forget to join the Discord for the Deck Doctor submissions, which will open later today, and the Deck Doctor will happen on Wednesday. So don't forget that. Just throwing it out there. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow then. Uh, peace out, everyone. Bye bye. Have a have a great uh, rest of your Monday. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. I'll send you to Farfa. Say hi. Bye bye.